how has the channel creation impacted your friendship? What is the biggest fight and difference in opinion? First off, Rich, you, a channel can't impact a friendship that was never there. Yeah, it's purely business. It's very immoral to hunt whale. It's very good that America has outlawed it. Most of the rest of the world has outlawed it. Totally it's probably correct. a good idea, right? It's a great idea. Totally agree. However, I would say Terry Pratchett is probably my favorite author. Ooh. And he's also do, Sanderson's favorite author. Yeah. So it, you're in good company. Do I think it's the best? Is he's the best author? He's up he's up there. But I'm not sure. The, the whole reason I say that is because I've if I ever want to feel like happy, like pure joy. Yeah. It's always you Terry You just come Pratchett. and talk to me. Uh, what? Never. <laughs> that's that's the opposite of what I do. <laughs> And that's why I basically only have black socks. Because why else. buy white socks? Okay, by the way, for 20,000 subscribers, we're not doing this shit again. <laughs> welcome, welcome everyone to the Tutor Realm Podcast. My name is Richard. My name is Austin. And thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers and growing wow. on YouTube and, of course, everywhere else. If you're listening to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all those things. Yeah. Thank you so much for supporting us. It's been a lot of fun so far. It's been so great that we took all of the money we earned from you, all those pennies, and we went to Iceland. We did. We, we were in Iceland when we hit 10,000 subscribers. That was a financially not wise decision to do. It was so unwise. But we did it anyway, and we it was did. fun. And you know what? Here's a little clip from us. Thank you from Iceland. A little thing we had to say, and we'll come right back, and we're going to have a Q&A, answer all the questions you submitted about books, our personal lives, and a lot of Richie's um, things. Oh, thanks. Okay, so here's Russ from Iceland. <laughs> well, hello there. Look at this ice wall behind us. Yeah, look at that. Laura, we look nice and cozy on Instead camera. Instead of drinking alcohol, we're the designated drivers doing a podcast thing exactly. in an ice bar. Look at that. We All look, our wow. friends are over there, <laughs> and we're here with you. Yes. Feel appreciated, because that's what we, look at we that. should. Well, we should feel appreciated, <laughs> because we just hit 10,000 subscribers. Oh, my God. We are so thankful, and we just happened to be in Iceland when we hit 10,000 subscribers. We were on the we're, plane. We are on the plane, and we are very honored. This is yeah. that's freaking awesome. It Isn't is really it? awesome. And So uh, thank you so yes. much for supporting us. Really appreciate it. And to all you guys, all you patrons out there, thank you so much. Oh, those look like better times. Those do. Those do. Now Prettier we're, times. We're in this better, de- better place. Yeah. This depressing basement where yeah. we just have each other. But we have more books here. We there do. There are more books here, which is... Now, what's better? Nature and, you know, Ooh. Mother Nature's Majesty or books? See, correct answer is books in yes. Mother's Na- and, Mother Nature's Majesty. It's very true. They had a very cool bookstore in Iceland where there was a band. A couple. So, yeah, the, remember yeah. the one where there was a live band oh, in the bookstore and there was just coffee over here. And then all and the then, Americans oh. just singing the American songs. It was fun. West Virginia, <laughs> Mountain Mama. Well, thank you guys so much for supporting us. If you want to actually continue supporting us, you can actually check out our Patreon down below where we do a monthly uh, book club. It's a ton of fun. Get to talk with us all the time. And, you know, more reachable, and we actually get to dis- discuss books with each other. If you want to ask more questions, the ones that aren't covered here, you can do that as well over yeah. our private Discord. But let's, without further ado, let's, let's, get, right let's get to the fan question. Wait, let's not call them fans. What would I, we call feel, them? It feels weird saying fans. Let's just say people that watch us when they have time. Video acquaintances? Video. They, they some, occasionally, they peruse the YouTube. They yeah. They come across us. They see, yes. I like that much better. It makes me feel... It makes me feel better saying that, you know? Or what would you like to call them other than that? Mm. Uh, some they, some mm. people want a name. They've been saying ramblers, like the but rambler so, viewers. It's so cringe. Too on the nose. It is on the nose. It's cringe, but that seems to be how things are. Yeah. What like else could YouTube it be? is cringe, and it revels in it. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I, I should really embrace the cringe. All right, first question. <laughs> first question is from David, and he asks, what was the first book? you remember reading on your own? On my own, I th- think it would have to be oh, something along the lines of Magic Treehouse. Oh, yeah. I think it was those books. I remember there was kind of a, there was a moment where those are the books that my mother read to me. 
Yeah. And then at some point I started reading them on my own. But then I think alongside there, it's that or the Hardy Boys. You're forgetting a special moment of your childhood. Hmm. Magic Treehouse was one of the early ones, but I, I think in kindergarten or pre-K, I can, I can remember hmm. Captain Underpants. I was never a Captain Underpants kid. That explains our personalities very much. <laughs> that, that explains a lot of this podcast scenario. I always thought Captain Underpants was just weird. At four years old, you would have bullied me. I mean, you still do, Probably. but you would have bullied me worse when, when we were four or five. Yeah. Uh, and do you want to do a little fun thing here and like go back and forth? I ask one question, then you ask the next one. It could be fun and interactive. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of fun. All right. You <laughs> ask the second question. This one's, this one's from us, Sam. Go ahead. Best place to start Terry Pratchett. Honestly, there's only one Ooh. wrong place to start Terry Pratchett. What's that? And that's the first book. Oh, because the first book's not that good. The Color of Magic, is that what yeah. it's called? Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not where he really went into his stride. The Their only options are Small Gods, Guards, Guards, um, Equal Rights, or... Mort, I guess you could start there, but I really wouldn't. Of all of those, though, give him one thing. Say, hey, if you want to start Terry Pratchett, this is the one. Small Gods. It's where I started. It's a great place to start. It's where you had me start. Oh, yeah. So, and fantastic book. Oh, yeah. You got Really it. great book. I'm yeah. thinking the next Terry Pratchett book you got to read is Guards, Guards. Um, I think that's honest. where we're going to we're gonna get you off. Okay. Because Vimes is a wonderful character. And for those who don't know, Terry Pratchett, he has this... He's British and he has this great humor. So Discworld just this very crazy world where yeah. it's the actual world is a disc of uh, a turtle where four elephants hold up the turtle. Is that correct? The great, uh, the great uh, god Atun, or the great, yeah. um, not no, sorry, the great turtle Atun who flies through space and on the back of the turtle is four elephants and on the back of those four elephants sits the world. A flat disc, because the world is flat. And isn't the sun too slow? It's like catching up to it or something? Yes. Yeah. Light is actually very slow. Yep. It has to catch up to the sun. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's a crazy fun world. It's, it, most of them are comedies. Oh, everything. Yeah. Everything in there is comedy, but yeah. it has so much heart. I would say Terry Pratchett is probably my favorite author. Ooh. and He's also do, Sanderson's favorite author. Yeah. So, it, you're in good company. Do I think it's... The best is he's the best author. He's up. He's up there. But I'm not sure. The, the whole reason I say that is because I've forever want to feel like happy, like pure joy. Yeah. It's always you Terry just come Pratchett. and talk to me. Uh, what? Never. <laughs> that's that's the opposite of what I do. But why? Whenever I hang out with you, you just start reading Terry Pratchett. It's so strange. I, it's like you get depressed. <laughs> and you're like, I, I need something good in my life. <laughs> But oh. you, you had me start with Small Gods. Fantastic place to start. Yep. 10 out of 10 place. And the next question we have is from Alex. He asks, favorite book illustrators? Now, to be fair, I don't have illustrators like right off the top of my head. Right. Other than, of course. Alan uh, Lee. Alan Lee. Yeah. Uh, Who does the books. Of, well, actually, that's not. I don't believe that's particularly. Yeah, that's probably Alan not. Lee. It's a, one of these. Are. All of my. Where are all of my Tolkien books? They I, used to be up there, and now they're all gone. Well, we okay. replaced it with the display. Ah, uh, that makes That's sense. Wait, but wait no. they're not sponsoring us anymore, so don't buy them. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, Alan Lee, and then there is, um, oh, the guy who made all of the Stormlight. Stormlight. Yes. What's his name? Oh, 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 it's gonna oh, hurt. oh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, he's great. I can... I can literally... Hey, you got this, you got this. I, I'm sure. I'm sure he's on here, right? Like, Yep, yep. He's, he's in here. I, I'm, I'll I'm, cut to you finding the name. It's fine. You'll, you'll cut to here. Uh, no, I won't. No, I'm going to no, keep this awkward no, part in. Of course you are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mike, Michael Whelan. Michael Whelan. Okay. Michael Whelan. He does all the Stormlight some, covers? Yeah. Okay, those are some of my favorite covers. He also does some of the uh, Wheel of Time ones as well. Sweet. So Sweet. He, he did some of my favorite Wheel of Time covers, so... Yeah. Not I have nothing guy. else to add. Great. And I wish we did know more of the artists. We should start paying more attention to who they are. Yeah. That will be a good thing. All right. The next question. Oh, I asked the last one. So now it's your turn. Oh, okay. Let me sure. pass the mantle over. This is from <laughs> Crystal. Uh, let's see. Crystal asks, uh, what are your favorite foods? If you were stranded on a des deserted island, what would you bring? What would you want to bring with you? Only three things. Only three foods. It says only three things. I think it's two uh, questions. Oh, that's two separate. Okay. Fav so what are your favorite foods? And then if you're stranded, what would what three things would you bring? Not okay. three foods would you bring? Yes. I see. Okay. So what's your answer? Favorite food is steak. 
specifically dry aged steak. <laughs> oh, <laughs> when we were when we were in Iceland, my friend and I, our other roommate, were get, were seeing at dinner how many times we could get Richard to say the word dry aged because it was he, a lot. I he, love it. he bought a dry aged steak, and we were. I felt bad because I was going like, Rich, what are you eating? And he was like, oh, a dry-aged steak. And then like three minutes later, I was like, what was it again? On the menu, he goes, oh, it's a dry-aged steak. And he was so passionate. And Justin and I, the other roommate, were just making fun of him the whole time. And so delicious. no joke, in one dinner, he unironically said the word dry-aged 31 times. <laughs> we, we counted. So you loved Good. your dry-aged steak. <laughs> but that same dinner, you remember what I had? Yeah. Whale. Whale is delicious. Whale is delicious. Now, but, yeah. should it be illegal? Yes. Yes. It's very immoral to hunt whale. It's very good that America has outlawed it. Most of the rest of the world has outlawed it. Totally it's probably correct. a good idea, right? It's a great idea. Totally agree. However, given the option, <laughs> rare illegal meat, have to try it. Iceland's Just one of had three to try countries, it. I think. It's Iceland, Norway, and Japan, Japan right? Yeah. yeah. So... Man, whale is delicious. Oh my! Goodness. I really wish there was a way to farm whale. I know there isn't. Like that—that's why you mm. you can't because it's impossible to farm them. And so, like, they're very important for the ecosystem. They either go extinct, yeah. or you know, we can eat them and they go extinct, or we don't. And so, unfortunately, but you had the whale and it was great, and it was amazing. But there's one food that tops that for me, hmm. and it's crab. Crab legs. Give me mm. crab legs until I die. I love all sorts of seafood. I mean, I guess you could yeah. swells also seafood, but crab, lots of... You know, lots you know of, that oh. used to be prisoner food. Crab? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Crab used to be... A, it's the cheap food of the commoner, and they served it to prisoners a lot, but... Why? During... Because uh, East was, Coast, it was cheap. Uh, it was cheap food, and not, not many people had it. But yeah. uh, with the canning industry, uh, the crab actually got sent over to the West Coast, and so... A lot, of, a lot more people got to try it, and it became a luxury item. Wasn't that the reverse of pigeon meat? Didn't something happen with pigeon yep. meat where it was originally... Um, pigeon used to be, well... Delicacy at yeah. one point, and then turned into... Then you know, they're now flying rats. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Same thing with chicken. Chicken yeah. in uh, England used to be a real delicacy, and it was because, of course, they don't have a lot of farmland there, so it's hard to mass-produce uh... chicken. America... Great as it is, amazing, huge land. They can produce a ton of chicken, and they plummeted the chicken price, which is why there was actually a uh, tariff war between England and America, the Great Chicken War. This is this is great, Rich. This is <laughs> I didn't know you had all this knowledge in you from a food question. This is fantastic. That well, the second part of that question is the stranded desert island. What three things would you bring? Ooh. Now, are we going fun? Or are we going practical? Oh yeah, because like practical, it would be something like the uh, like, like United a, a cellular tower yeah. and a cell phone. <laughs> That's really all you need. Uh, but uh, I don't know a helicopter. What, would, what three things would I bring that are just like pure fun? Probably a personality. Start with that. Nah, to bring that you have to have it, and I don't have it. I so. mean, one could dream. One can one dream. dream. Uh, what th three fun things? I well, guess. Uh, I think I'd have to bring a book. Yeah, yeah. At have the very to. least. And it's either... Bring a book that you haven't read that would take you forever. You're on a deserted island, so why not bring... Mm -hmm. uh, or something you could just read over and over. You get... Con like, I get honestly, you, I think the Bible... Because like, you could actually read honestly, it start to finish, right? You could actually read it start to finish. Like, there's so many ways to interpret, and you could, like, mull it over. Like, if I just bring Lord of the Rings... I love Lord of the Rings... But you read it, and then you understand it. And then I read it, like, maybe five times. Uh, and then I'm, I'm kind of done... The Bible still being read today, and people get new meaning out of it. Like it's the one book that could probably last. It doesn't really get old, time. does it? Yeah, <laughs> honestly, that would be fun. It's like I would just the three you things. You come back a scholar. I bring, I bring back. I bring the Bible. Yeah. The. The, the Quran, the, the Quran, and the Torah. <laughs> I read all three of those and figure out which one I like. <laughs> there you go. There we go. By the time I'm back off the deserted island, I'll become religious in probably one of the three major religions. That's a great... I'm not topping that answer. That was... Like, you walked yourself into a fantastic answer. Yeah. And I'm giving myself credit for walking you there a little there bit. But you know what? That, I'm going to stick with your what, answer. No, no. Three? That's the answer. Oh, that is that the answer? Is the, okay. that's, a whole, that's a great answer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This next question is from Alex. Alex, mm -hmm. uh, Alex asks... I never had... Alex, Alex asks is a weird... What do we get? Alliteration to say, you know? Alex asks... 
It's the two it's one X's. Of those, it's it's got to be that. So Alex says, "Have you guys read the Realm of Elderlings by Robin Hobb? If not, will you guys ever get to reading them? And what's turning you off if you haven't read them yet? Have you read that? Um, nope. It's in the series. However, okay. I do really like Robin Hobb. Robin Hobb is on a pure prose level, just yep. writing. She is one of our best." fantasy writers living today that's high praise on, on a pure prose that's level awesome. she is brilliant and really love her stuff but it's also depressing her stuff really she likes to bully her main character so her main character in um, fits yeah, yeah in the main the, her first series it starts with assassin's quest I'm okay trying to remember the name of the series but yeah fits uh he, he's bullied hard and it hurts it hurts to read so, I, I that's honestly the reason why I've been avoiding continuing on the series is like, do I want to feel sad today? And normally the answer is no. So whenever you, I want to feel sad, I'll go back to Robin Hobb. You would say the Robin Vetterlings, that's on the list. We will get yeah. to that eventually. It's just the only How thing stopping us is time till we get to God, there. That's there's so, so much to read, to read. So much to read. Yeah. Too much. But it's great. It's great. Yeah. We could have endless content. <laughs> All right. Next question. You want to rip this one off? Yeah. Uh, Emily asked, uh, comfort TV show slash movie you rewatch a lot? Great question. Let's tell you go first. Com- so here's the one thing about me. Hmm. I don't rewatch or reread things almost ever. Hmm. It has to be a long time, and I will then get back into it because it has to be enough time to distance myself to where I'll get something from it again. So if I'm talking comfort, like just pull off in the background, the f- I don't know why the first thing that came to mind was Impractical Jokers. Impractical Jokers. Yeah, you ever? Se- what? Why'd you give that face? And it's just I had never seen you watch that. I mean, this was more. We've when lived I'm, together yeah. for how? Well, many we don't years? have we don't have cable or anything here. Uh, okay. So if and that's the thing, have I rewatched or reread anything in all the time? Like here, yeah. No. Oh, what? what? I mean, Avatar, The Last Airbender. I've seen the show twice. Yeah. Once when enough. I was like a kid, and then second when we watched as adults. <laughs> but fair enough. It, that that was really it. But as far as rewatchability, like even clips on YouTube, I guess. Like well, I, well, then yeah. what about movie? Ooh, movie. Again, that's tough. I, I guess Lord of the Rings I watch all the time. Yeah. But it's very long, so sometimes I, I won't just go to that for you know I'm, I'm pulling it up for an average day. Mm-hmm. I gotta say, a classic '80s film like a B- fierce bueller's day off or a breakfast club i can always sit there and although again i've seen them maybe three times in my life i just don't mm. go back and rewatch stuff a lot but i feel like it's a good thing to have in the background just comfort you know you're cooking sunday breakfast you look over you see ferris being ferris to be fair the honest answer is we're now with all the reading stuff mm. is if we're not actively physically reading a book it's yeah. an audio book that's true do a lot well, more what's your answer then because I, I this, uh, I'm a bad person to ask this question I don't rewatch stuff I really like Person of Interest so Person of Interest is kind of a comfort show for me to watch that or the old MacGyver series not the new remake one but I love MacGyver yeah and then Stargate SG-1 I've seen probably five six seven times That's all the answer. way through yeah I love Stargate Stargate SG-1's my thing nice so that and movie wise comfort movie Sing Street Sing Street Blues update. Brothers that's the correct answer it's Blues Brothers how about I just answer your questions for I know you better than yourself <laughs> yeah <probably. laughs> if Blues Brothers is the top one there oh yeah I've rewatched yeah. that movie so many times fair it, it's perfect perfect movie 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 next, it's never been topped <laughs> next question we have from Blake's S, what's your favorite variety of cheese? Now, Blake's, I'm not <laughs> sure if, I don't know if Blake knows me personally or something, but I, I can't eat dairy, so I don't know if this was a personal attack or not, <laughs> but what's your favorite variety, Rich? Uh, there's two. It's either Bulgarian feta oh, you're so or very, f- very fresh, the like freshly made uh, mozzarella. Or, little side, side note, little little tip that I garnered through food culinary tastings. That's the other thing that annoys me about you. What? You know that? What? Yeah, like the way you said Bulgarian feta. I'm yeah. cultured. And here's the other thing, viewers. You were not... So th- the same meal we were talking about with the whale and the dry-aged ribeye, the dry-aged yeah. steak, that same... Oh, viewers, I wish you were there. I wish I recorded it. I so bad wish I recorded this. Rich sits there after talking about dry age. It's like, this is after the 22nd time he said dry age. He cuts the steak, going for his first bite. We're, we have a big dinner set up. And of course, my eyes drift towards him because he's 
you know, it's rich. Yeah, you're always looking at me. I'm always looking at you. So he takes the bite of this dry-aged, and if you're audio only, I'm so sorry you can't see this, but he goes like this. Mm, damn something like that to that effect and i looked at you and only I, you know, slightly exaggerated no, only slightly. slightly you know schottenfreuder yeah. like that whole concept mm-hmm. i was like i think i feel that towards you <laughs> <laughs> it was the only time in our whole friendship where i just went he's too happy <laughs> it, it was fun it was, the rever- so it was the reverse of shot it was it you was felt displeasure <laughs> at someone else's happiness yeah i don't you were enjoying it so much. I was like, "Damn, I want to feel that kind of love one day." <laughs> but it was delicious. It did, yeah, it did look delicious. And to be yeah. fair, the whole meal was great. So, anyways, we, I cut you off on something you were going on about your culinary skills here. Try out a very sharp cheddar cheese with your apple pie. That is a great pairing. I didn't. I have no idea what region of the United States that's from. It's from somewhere. Probably Wisconsin, but I have no Probably. idea. But I've tried that, and I'll be honest, I think it's as good, it's equal to apple pie and vanilla ice cream. Huh. I could have either one. I think they're both delicious. I am learning from this conversation. I, I did kind of know this in the past, mm. but we should talk about food more. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> I do like food. And by it's the way, great. viewers, the, we have, we're going to answer like all the questions you guys sent in, so strap in for a long episode. It's going to be a long one and a fun one. So. Yeah. Next, I think I asked that one, didn't I? So you are next. Let's see. Uh, Doodlin commented, uh, if, you have, if you had a food truck and you could only serve five sandwiches, what are your choices? Why are all these food questions? This is great. <laughs> Everyone's curious about food. Five sandwiches. Okay, hoagie's got to be one. A Philly cheesesteak. Fair enough, yeah. Um, now you toss out one. We'll, we'll make the five together. Um, an open-faced... Tomato and feta sandwich. Open face. What's that mean? No second top. Oh, okay. So just one piece of one bread. bread there. Then is that a sandwich? Tomato and feta. Does a sandwich have to have two pieces of bread? Open face sandwich. Then again, a hoagie is kind of a roll. Yeah. So, I mean, okay, a hoagie is so a taco. All right, let's not have this conversation. It's going to be a long <laughs> conversation. All right, we got to throw in as well a classic, like a BLT. Or is mm, that too basic? Nah, I would... Honestly, my favorite sandwich out there is would be turkey and provolone. Turkey, provolone, mustard, and mayo. Throw on PB and J, I guess, for our roommate. He likes that stuff. Ugh, I guess for the children, <laughs> for you know, just to please some people. And then what? What's the fifth one? Toss one out. Fifth one. Mm. He's. I guess I'm underdeveloped in my sandwich knowledge. Ooh, nah. I you gotta go with a Reuben. A Reuben. A Reuben. Mm. Okay. The, that's a hard sandwich to uh, actually make good. Like, I've had a bunch of root, and it comes down to the bread. Like, a lot of places, like, just it's crap, rye bread, and then just kind of terrible pastrami. Like, a, a really good like pastrami sandwich is really hard to find. Good answers, Rich. So... Coming out with that food knowledge again. I love it. All right, next question. This is from William. William asks, how do you guys feel about the Shannara Chronicles? We have not read. Heard it. It's on a list somewhere. Don't know if it's on my list yet, but it's on a list. That's the one from the 70s, right? Yeah. My dad read that, said he loved it. He recommended it to me. So there you go. Uh, One of these days. One of these days, we will read the Shannara Chronicles. Next question. Oh, it's your turn. Oh, yeah. Of course. This is up for me. Don't you feel like we're sharing and bonding? Yeah, and I don't like it. Okay. It feels bad. Okay. It feels gross. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sam is asking, which community is more haughty, fantasy or sci-fi or both? This is an easy answer. You ready? Three, two, one. Sci-fi. Oh, I thought we were getting... But yeah, it is sci-fi. I, you said three. I, I, but I was I was saying, like, should be three, two, one countdown, and you just said... I thought you already went with it. No, you I'll, were leading me into it. I thought you were going to... You're right. You're, okay, I'll take the L. That's on, on you. That's on your... That's on you. I'll take That's it. your L. But listen, I will take the one L. <laughs> <laughs> no more L's. <laughs> and the it's, answer is it's definitely... It's so sci-fi. It's so sci-fi. Yeah. Thing is, they have a right to be. Mm-hmm. They're like, smarter than us. They are smarter. They're, they have PhDs. Exactly. All the best sci-fi is written by someone with a PhD, and they like came across something in their research and went, "Oh, wouldn't that be fun if we took this the- this theory and actually made it like real?" Yeah. And they apply like real world science to this fantastical type of world, and it just yes. And, and through osmosis, the community then is more attracted to 
that kind of haughtiness, I guess. Of The yeah. more intelligent it is, the more intelligent your community will be. And from there comes haughtiness. thing is, I, I think the both, both fantasy and sci-fi have their schlop. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm following. I would say your schlop for sci-fi would be kind of in the vein of like Flash Gordon and to a certain degree Star Wars. Like kind of your space opera stuff is in the same vein as sci-fi it's kind of in that realm and then fantasy also has their schlop you know their uh i'm trying to think of like your fantasy D &D, your your standard kind of D D stuff that's kind of your random story there's normally some you know beautiful busty gal in the main cover to appeal to male fantasy i see what you mean okay just that I'll, kind of you stuff. lost me and you got me but okay i, I see what understand you're like to those I understand. two Here's the thing. I think sci-fi has dropped a lot of their schlock material. Like, I don't see as much schlock from sci-fi anymore. It's now niched down. Where fantasy, I still see the wide range of like really high intensity, yeah. like re your Malazans, your Game of Thrones, but then also your... Uh, I don't know. You should stick Witcher, to the food talk, I guess. Witcher TV <laughs> show. <laughs> we should turn this into food to ramble because I think we do a lot better job with that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but I, I do get, I do get. It. It's tough to think top ahead of like, okay, what's the? Well, I, I don't know, like, because bad you don't read shows. that stuff. Yeah, no, okay. I, I don't. I don't read the kind of uh, the schlop. The schlop. You I don't read that. I stuff. think you said schlop more than dry age this episode. Yeah, That's probably. impressive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this next question we have from Aria, and she asks, "Love the pod, thank you, Aria. Thanks so much." Um, two questions. Okay, first question: Do you have a writing routine? And second question: Have you consumed and analyzed? Oh, sorry. Having consumed and analyzed so many great stories, do you find it difficult to write to your tastes and standards? Thanks. Wow. So that's a question for you, more directed for me. So I'm writing a book, a fantasy book. Now, to the first question: Do you have a writing routine? I did at certain points, and I gotta say, I've not been sticking to it. I. There's a challenge that's coming soon to the channel. We will announce in an upcoming video of if you want to participate in writing, we're going to have a challenge and goal. But I'm going to create a schedule where I go for 500 words a day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep that consistent. I just have to clear my schedule more and get... I have to organize myself more so that I'm able to fit that in my daily schedule. And I just have yeah. to do it. So the motivation is there. Just the discipline of focusing on it needs to be there like it is with other things. So I just got to aim toward it. So don't have one currently, but I promise I will. And so the second question, having consumed and analyzing so many great stories, do you find it difficult to write to your tastes and standards? Yes. I, yes. I would say I was one of those people that rewrote my chapter one over and over. I had hundreds of versions of it to where it turned into different stories. And I've written different stories that I just stopped because uh, I've I guess reading a lot or more so I, I, I don't read a lot let's be honest compared to the other people who have read way more than me but loving stories so much and digesting a ton of them whether it's films whether it's shows or whether it's books like this seeing so much of it I have this like unrealistic standard of every word has to be perfect and every indentation needs to be exquisite and Rich is going to read this and I don't want to look self-conscious. So I want him to be proud of me for once. Yeah. Ah, you know I'm going to be honest. When you finally pass that first draft over yeah. to me, I'm going to be brutally honest. So I guess you are the reason. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's my, so yeah, it is. It is definitely uh, difficult to write to my taste and standards and I have to get over some of that. So thank you for Aria for the enlightening lesson that yeah. you just taught me there and do you want to touch on that or your your writing journey isn't as i have i have an idea i have outlines yeah. i just don't really have as much of the time to that, write that's the toughest part yeah so i i kind of have other priorities right now before i'm writing hopefully i find the time but. yes and hey maybe if i start getting a routine in, i can like push and maybe Okay, that, that was a tough <laughs> maybe on your part. All right, this next question from Tyler. Go ahead, Rich. All right, Tyler's commenting here. The word consequences means the result of an action, usually negative. By that logic, if an action has positive results, uh, would the correct wording be prosequences? See, that's just that's inaccurate a because of the definition. Because you say in the in this whole thing, consequences means the result of an action, usually negative, which implies that it's not always negative, which means the correct word is consequences. But I understand 
con versus pro. This was a Q and A, not a Q and statement, Tyler. <laughs> I mean, like, oh con... wait, there, there is a question at the end. My bad. He he does put a question mark there. He does put a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> I think Tyler woke up one morning and said, "I got this is what I got to type to Tutor Ramble," and I respect it. <laughs> All right, next question is from Jamal. Jamal asks, "F Mary kill Darrow Gimli and death from Discworld." Which what do you think? Uh, for me, you're gonna kill problem. a Darrow. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> kill Darrow. Yeah. Marry Gimli, and have sex F- with death. have sex death. with death because mainly because of the pillow talk. <laughs> I'd want pillow talk with death. <laughs> that would be, be that would be the best time. Oh, but there could be a lot of a lot of irony there. Yeah. Well, also like. To say you banged death would just be... Yeah. Oh, so many euphemisms. Oh, yeah. Flirted with death, all this. I mean, yeah, that, that's a life of adventure and mystery. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was going to say some unruly things. I'm going to hold back for that. <laughs> all right, next question from... Did I say that one? Okay, your turn, right? Yeah. Uh, Mark. Mark's asked, uh, Richard, how, how do you feel about Wheel of Time Book 10, Crossroads of Twilight? I believe it is terrible, even though the Wheel of Time as a series is great. I'll be honest, it flew past for me no spoilers no spoilers because i haven't read if you're reading it if you're reading wheel of time slowly one book at a time and i can imagine reading it at the time of release that this is the book you've been waiting for over a year and finally the book drops and you read it and you're like that's it that's it (laughs) i can imagine the frustration from it for me all i remember from crossroads it's it's definitely like one of the worst books in the series it's up there with me of like Eye of the World and Crossroads of Twilight are probably about the same. Maybe Crossroads is a little worse. However, I only remember it being like, oh, that plot line's a little long. That's about but it. But you were reading them back to back to back. You didn't have to wait the year. So it's yeah, different so, for you for a reader that was reading them as they came out. Yeah. For me, Wheel gotcha. of Time is not individual books. It's an entire series. There you go. It's It was all one continuous story where I I literally didn't... I, I always brought both books when I was close to the finish of yeah. one because I would finish the chapter and then right away pick start. up the next one and start the next one. So it was just continuous. They blended together. They all blended. It was great. And we will be reviewing The Great Hunt very soon. Remember, it's very on soon. him. It He's is. the one slowing us down, it, not am. me. Yeah. I've been pushing it, but what can I do? You're, I can't, you're supposed like, to make us look stalwart. And you can you can bring a horse to water, and you, but you can't make it drink. Richard, I thought our we, we're supposed to look stalwart and companions. We're supposed to be strong friends in front of these people. But that's the whole thing with guy friends is that we rip on each other. I don't. I don't think we said one nice thing. Like not just on camera. Yeah. Off cam. Why would we ever do that? Because there's nothing good to say. Like why would we? All right. This next question is from. Oh, this is a double question from okay. Keegan. Keegan asks, "Have you read any manga? And would you guys ever consider reviewing manga?" Um, yes and yes. However, to the second question, I definitely want to hold off from reviewing manga as much as we can on the channel, just because that seems to be the, what a lot of people have complaints with the whole booktube community is booktubers will reach a certain height and then because the nature of the whole community, it doesn't get much higher. Are you calling out Murphy Napier? Yeah, no, I'm calling out all of them, but like, (laughs) it's basically when they have reached the cap of booktube Mm -hmm. and they want to start getting some more views they release the manga reviews because that actually does well and it's easier to do content on and so even though yeah manga's great and all i don't want us to go down that route don't want to become a manga channel well because here's the thing we're gonna do if we do one it'll be like our best performing video oh really yeah it will it 100 percent will and then we'll be like ah oh, oh, da- what more. what do we do do we do yeah. a disc world book where we're gonna get a fifth of the views Seven or do viewers, we do right. another chapter of a manga <laughs> yeah. and get so many more views and then we become a manga channel if we want views romance novels too that is true. We need to get into some romance novels. Diversify. Because mm-hmm. I, I have not read any manga yet, so you'll have, you'll have to introduce me to something. I, I, I had some yeah. great suggestions, by the way, um, to re- Berserk, I've heard. It's yes, I've been, that would be the one I'd want to read with you. I haven't read it myself. I've just heard a lot of good things about it. Yeah. Most of the manga I read is like when I'm on the toilet. That's when I catch up with One Piece. Awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> okay, next question. Did I, re- I read that, so it's up to you yeah. now. So, Simon 
asked, uh, who's your favorite character and why is it Tom Bombadil? No one will ever top for me down there, Colin. That's my favorite character in all of everything. But even from Lord of the Rings, my favorite character is Boromir. Hmm. I love, I mean, of course you got perfect Gandalf, you have perfect, like it's so hard, it's so hard to pick, but I love my Boromir. I think I have to go with Discworld, though. Yeah, Discworld, fair enough, fair enough. Death's Discworld is probably my favorite. Next question is from Raikusun, who asks, what are your top three video games of all time? For you. Number one, don't even at me, it's Minecraft. (laughs) (laughs) I I loved Minecraft so much as a teenager, as a kid as well. Like, oh my God. You could do everything with it. It's endless possibilities. You could play any game you want. It's creative. It's you, you could fight you could build you could engineer it's actually practical uh you could play with your kids you can play with it's a perfect game there's a reason why it is i think it was the highest selling video game of all time Oh, it still is i think it was dethroned by something recently no way i'm pretty sure what we can maybe check later but for me my favorite game has to be the one i've spent the most time is don't starve together don't start. Tell, tell us about that. Let's don't start together. It's a survival game, top down, top down viewing. Basically, the game is mean to you. What do you mean mean to you? Uh, unfair things happen all the time, and then that's the game. Monsters come out, survive the dark. Fun. You're gonna starve. Get food. Don't starve. Don't starve. It's great. Neat. Now, that that's Hollow gonna, Knight yeah. and God of War. Great. So for me, it's Minecraft. Then I'll throw in. I, I don't. Play, so I don't play video games now. Mm-hmm. Um, I as a kid, I'd say so. My games are gonna be like Mario Kart. It's gonna be. I, I haven't played the big ones. I haven't played Red Dead. I haven't played God of War. I haven't played Skyrim. So I can't attest to that. I'm, a, I'm just gonna stick with Minecraft. Yeah, <laughs> Minecraft, Minecraft, and Minecraft. There Those you go. are the top three. Next question is from Mason James. Mason asks, "What's your favorite battle in a book and your favorite villain?" Favorite battle Ooh. is easy. Not even close. Wheel of Time. It's the last, the last battle. battle in the Wheel of Time. Do you understand? I haven't that, read it yet, so I can make fun of you. Do you understand the battle scene? The, yeah. the chapter? It's 200 pages. It's the length of Harry Potter. It's <laughs> the first book. Is Harry it Potter really? Book. Yes, it's longer than the first Harry Potter book. Oh, that's pretty epic. It's, it's, it's pretty, one chapter. That's pretty epic. I like that. 200 page <laughs> chapter. <laughs> 14 books leading up to the final battle. Yes. Yes, please. Listen, I can make fun of it as long as I haven't read it yet. So it's yeah, fine. I know. <laughs> so that's your favorite battle? What's your Who's your favorite villain? Mm. Why, Ru- oh, okay. Up there, I'm not sure. If they, he's at least up there. I'm not sh- Someone else may take it, but mm. the one off the top of my head is probably Andrew, Andrew Skyle from Lightbringer. You've mentioned and okay. Mm-hmm. I gotta read Lightbringer so bad. Okay. You do. For me, I would say favorite villain, Jackal. The Jackal from the Red Rising series, I think is phenomenal. I love the Jackal. Um, I love his evilness. He's just whoa, thr- thrilling villain. And favorite battle, are we counting duels? I think so. If we count duels, I will no spoilers, the duel from Stormlight. The duel. The duel. Everyone knows the duel. <laughs> I've not felt that in any battle sequence in a book ever. If we're gonna go duels, I would have to say the duel from book three of the Wheel of Time. Okay, if we're gonna go another duel, <laughs> I'm gonna say the duel from Sword of Kagan. That's a good one. Oh, uh, it wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question is from Brightwatcher. Mm. Coffee or tea? Uh, the correct answer for me is coffee because I have an addiction, but I do like a good cup of tea. I'm going to go tea. It, tea is nice. Coffee sustains me. And if I don't have enough of it, I get a headache. So you need coffee. I but need you want coffee. tea. Do you know how many like months? Like honestly, it was going on like at least over a year where I was wondering, man, every Saturday I like have headaches. I feel <sighs> just so friends. lethargic and yeah. I get headaches on Saturday and I never knew why. Yeah. It's cuz I didn't drink coffee in the morning on Saturdays. Because I drank coffee in the mornings for work Monday through Friday, and I didn't mm. drink coffee on Saturdays. So all my weekends were just painful mush. Because I wasn't... So now I wake up and go, damn it, I have to have my coffee or else I'm like going to drop. I may have a problem. 
and you're trying to convince me to drink coffee. Yes, it's better. All right. It's a better way of life. Caffeinated life is better than non-caffeinated life. I won't say the thing that I've said in the past. We'll, we'll not rehash this debate. Yeah, no, no. no. We're not, we're not, we've said it too we're many not, episodes. Yeah, we've, no. We've, we've, no we'll, Don't we'll on me again. We'll, we'll move on. <laughs> All right. Question from Caleb. Is water wet? No. Yeah, no, it's not. I never understood this debate. Like, water can make things wet. Water itself cannot be wet. Isn't the whole point of wet meaning a liquid touches a solid? Like water touches a solid? Um, no, because... Yeah, I think so. That's pretty much it. And because... You know, the liquid with a liquid... No, other, a no liquid. other liquid can be wet. Yeah, it just touches a solid. Yeah, that's an easy question. Let's, yeah. yeah I, I don't get why that's a huge internet question. You know what I mean? Also, I think wet mainly implies that if something is wet, it can also be dry. dry. Yeah. And water can never... It, it, it is water's water. Yeah. So if something cannot ever be dry, then it cannot be wet. Hard hitting question. Let's not spot. Yeah, we we got them all coming. <laughs> this next question is for. Oh, I've been saying the past couple. Go ahead. This one's from Jacob. Oh, okay. Uh, Jacob saying, assuming a live action adaptation of the Stormlight Archive, which actor or actresses would you cast as the main characters? Uh we we both got to agree with one. He has to be in some role. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, if you are fans of the Stormlight Archive, you will need this actor, Henry Cavill. Because not only is Henry Cavill in everything he does, he is a nerd like us. He cares about the projects he does, just like he did with Witcher. Even though Witcher didn't end up being what it should have been, Henry Cavill is Ger- Geralt. And uh, I probably said the name wrong. Geralt. It's Geralt. Um, because he puts his heart and soul into it. He's read Stormlight Archive. He's actively read it. And he would, I don't know what character he'd be. Though. I want to say if we give him some more years, if it's way down the line, maybe Dalinar. But again, Maybe. it's it's close, but he needs to play something. Henry Cavill <laughs> needs to be there for the energy. The only character he could realistically play would be Adeline. And I think he's uh, too big for he's Adeline, too old. too. He's too old and he's, too Adeline's big. Adeline's real young. Like he's, yeah, and yeah. I, I'll just see Adeline as more lengthy. Yeah, lanky, more slender. A yeah. More, yeah. Like, honestly, Henry Orlando Hill's Bloom. Great. Oh, you know Orlando Bloom. Wait, Orlando Bloom's, Bloom's getting up there in age too. Yeah, young so, Orlando Bloom. But who would you pick for Dalinar? That's so tough. I think a Russell Crowe would probably be a good fit. Oh yeah, Russell Crowe or maybe even oh guy from Taken. He was oh um, uh, Qui Gon Liam, Liam Neeson. Yeah. I think he could also do a good one. I agree with um, Russell Crowe. Maybe not Liam Neeson, but I think, yeah, that would be a good one. And then what about... I have no idea who it'd be. Shalon, you know who you'd want. The, the What's her name? There's you, a lot of people. No, out the there. actress, the redhead actress that you love. Oh, um, Karen McGillan. Yeah, you want... Karen McGillan. Would she oh, be a good Shalon, you fake. think? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I just want her to see her and stuff. <laughs> I don't care. She's a good Just fit. more Karen McGillan. Yeah. More Karen McGillan. That's all I need. <laughs> So we got Shalon, we've got Dalinar. What about Kaladin? Oh, I have no. Oh my god, because Kaladin, you. Mm. You I'll know be what? Honest, be great? I kind of yeah. want some no name. I was gonna say the same thing. Yeah, I, I was gonna say the same thing. Not just for Kaladin, but for most of the cast. What mm-hmm. made Game of Thrones so enjoyable? So I mean, at least the seasons until they completely ruined the show. First, starting off the show, there's not really big names. Of course, you have Peter Dinklage and a few here mm-hmm. and there. But, but to be fair, people, Peter Dinklage made his name on Game of Thrones. He, definitely most. more. He was more so. known before, but... Yeah. Yeah. But look at Amelia Clark. Look at Kit Harrington and who they were back then. These were kind of no-names that just did a great job. You could immerse yourself almost more. Because as soon as you see, like, Paul Rudd on screen, there's automatically this connection. And th- this goes into the conversation about separating the art versus the artist, where separating the art versus the artist is usually seen as a, oh, some artist does a bad thing and you can't separate that from them. Sometimes the actor or actress could just be so well-known and lovable. Like, it, you can that, have... That happened with yeah. Leonard Nimoy in, mm-hmm. um, in Star, Star Trek. Really? Everyone oh. saw him as Spock, and he was so typecast, and oh. like, no one could see him as anything other than Spock. Mm-hmm. That's, that's Honestly, I think the only character from the original Star Trek who was able to break out was, um, you know, James T. Kirk. Uh, he, he was the only one that was able to break it out of it. That's where it takes some phenomenal actors to where you have, you know, your Leonardo DiCaprio's, your Al Pacino's, your, your big names that if they are so phenomenal acting, you can, like, your suspension of disbelief, you're, like, looking at them as that character. It's Again, it's still tough. You see Leo, you're like, oh, that's Leo. But, By the way, I think I do have... 
I yeah. do have the name for Adeline. Oh, who? Ryan Gosling. Okay. Alert to everybody watching. I am a Ryan Gosling stan. I think everything he is in that I've ever seen, he puts his heart into it. He's fun. He, it looks like he enjoys being there. It, we, we, got, we got to see uh, Barbie not <laughs> a few days ago, yeah, and yeah. like Ken, literally me. <laughs> I feel like that's all. Rich, like, you are guys. you are enough. You are <laughs> most guys look at Ken like, oh my god, it's literally me. You don't want. I wish in the Barbie movie. I they, loved Ken in that movie. I wish they so did great. a Lord of the Rings reference. Like, oh, that would have been hilarious. Yeah. Instead of a, uh, um, what did they do in the film? Uh, Godfather. Yeah. You know when they were looking. Uh, anyways, if you haven't seen the movie, but Ryan Gosling and everything he's in, I love him. Mm-hmm. I think he's he's just a good dude. Yeah. So Adeline, you think? I think so. Whatever, like, just put just, him in there. Put just him in the blonde, the blonde hair, and just like the the best boy attitude, like just so lovable. And also, Adeline's supposed to be a little bit of a player. Ryan Gosling. Oh, I like, see what you're saying. But also, Ryan Gosling has that physical presence. I think I could see him being a fencer. So you're shipping then, Ryan? Oh, l- tiny. I, I didn't want. I don't know if that was a spoiler or anything, but. Yeah, it's mm. it's like book two. Well, I'll, I'll mute it anyways, just in okay. case. All right. This next question is from X Tot, who says, "Have either of you read the Arc of Scythe series? If you, if so, did you enjoy it? Which one is your favorite? We have not read that I yet. Read of it? I've seen it in stores a lot though. Um, then another question from Jacob says, "Have either of you read Malazan Book of the Fallen? Not yet, but we will again. It's just time. It's we will get to it. We've heard great things. The reason why, and especially when." Before we started the channel, I was looking to start either Wheel of Time or Malazan. I was kind of deciding between the two. Yeah. And looking into it, seeing that Malazan was basically a harder thing to read than Game of Thrones. And I was like, especially starting out there, I was like, I'm going to go with Wheel of Time. <laughs> so you, you invested your time there in that big yeah, series. I, yeah, I just knew that Malazan threw, threw you off into the deep end and so I wasn't ready at that time comment below I if, now yeah, could read it comment below if you really want Rich and I to read Mel- Malazan oh of course uh, don't do that to no, us no, I just want to see our, our TBR is going to get even no, bigger do it so that I can procrastinate longer for Wheel of Time and make Rich no, more furious yes. so let us let me know if I should drop you know Wheel what of I was, Time I was hoping and start Malazan get, I thought it was reasonable that we read one Wheel of Time book a month and how long is it taking you to read this second book? Well, Red Rising entered my life. I had to read five books Ugh. there, the book club, and then we were on vacation. Listen, I'm getting there. I've got five Jeez. hours left in the audiobook. We're almost there. It keeps getting... I thought you were at four. Now it's five. Now it's... Okay. <laughs> you said I was at four for like three months. That's why. <laughs> All right. This next question. Go ahead. I've been reading them. Uh, this one's from Layla. Um, Layla says, what unlikely character from Lord of the Rings trilogy moved you the most and why? Uh, from Lord of the Rings movies, it would probably be, shoot, from the movies, like the unlikely character that moves you? Unlike, unlikely, that's a good question. I got, I got my answer for the books very yeah, easily. Yeah, easily for the books. That's not even, that's not even a hard question. If, oh, really? I want to see if, want, let's go books then. Yeah. For Lord of the Rings. Um, uh, Faramir. So Faramir for you, Eowyn for me. Interesting. Also, a uh, yeah, I loved Eowyn's story as well. For so yeah, first for you, why Faramir? Well, Faramir was just such a interesting, wise character in the first book. One of the very few characters that actually came across the ring and was able to logic out the way to not be tempted by it, and uh, made the wise decision, realized where his brother failed, and actually moved forward with it. And also, of course, by the end, uh, helped Eowyn. Uh, find her new purpose in life and kind of showed her that like our answers are intertwined then yeah yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean Eowyn's story is really great oh, all the death and tragedy in her life and then wanting to just go out uh, thinking that the way that she can find purpose in her life is to find a glorious death and so she starts seeking battle and wants to find a glorious end and then she does accomplish this amazing thing. She takes out the you know leader of the Nazgul, yeah. and then she's alive. It's like war's kind of over. What does she do now? Yeah, thanks for taking my answer, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it felt great. I love taking it from you. So, but Faramir does does that for you too. I think especially for us, where movies and books both ten out of ten. I'll stop right there. Both of them. Both. 
I just, towers. My Adam Sandler. <laughs> Two towers, I don't think is 10 out of 10. <laughs> so anyways, with Faramir and Eowyn, in the movies at least, so I, everything's amazing in the movies, but you can only focus so long on characters. And mm-hmm. even the three, four hour films, even extended, because there's only so long you could spend with, with these characters. Eowyn is in the third film, like she has her big moment, just like she does in the book. But then after that, you don't see much of her. You see she's with Faramir in the movies and so forth. But whereas in the book, you get a whole new depth to her character. And you, you said it perfectly, won't reiterate, but you find what, what her purpose in life and that just... She accom- she was glorious in battle. That that wasn't enough. Like that didn't yeah. satisfy what she was seeking. And you found purpose in life and peace. And that's a beautiful message. Well, yeah, so basically having the like she's such a strong character in that she puts everything she has into her purpose and goals. That mm-hmm. when it was war, she took down the Warrior. leader of the school and great with a sword, all this stuff. And then in peace, she realized like okay, well, there's not much point in me being a warrior now anymore because, you know, the enemies are vanquished. Who's there to kill, yeah. Puts down the sword and says, you know what? I'm going to be the best mother out of here. Like, yeah. I am going to bear the greatest children. I'm going to be the best mother. And that's what peacetime is for, is life and yeah. glory and family. And so she just conquers that. She puts her all into it, and she's going to be the best. Sounds like anyone's better than Faramir to me. I don't know. She is pretty great. <laughs> All right, next question we have is from Richard. Ooh. Wow. Okay, want, want me to read this one to you? Yeah, Okay. So Richard asks, do either of you agree with the concept of authors slash director slash artists being able to alter a media piece after it's already been released? Lucas with Star Wars, J.K. Rowling, etc. Or once a piece is out in the general populace, it shouldn't be changed because it makes it a fundamentally different piece of art. I don't know if that's too big a topic, but I wanted to give y'all one to pat out uh, on the video to give y'all more work. <laughs> Love the show. Keep the rambling. Thank you, Richard. Great question. Fundamentally, I do think an artist owns their work. However, it is more of an annoying thing on a historical aspect of if you want to know what people saw back then. Like, the Star Wars one is a great example, is if I want to see what people first saw in the movies it's really hard it like if i want to experience what people first like when they first saw star wars i i'm gonna have a hard time finding that and i feel just like historically speaking that's not really a great thing to do and true well to an author that we both absolutely love tolkien mm-hmm. i mean he has a bunch of letters you can look through his entire library of him explaining the work and adding on top of it and Robert Jordan's done the same like not not afterwards he had notes prior so it's a bit different with Robert Jordan but with mm-hmm. Tolkien he had lettered decades after writing Lord of the Rings of explaining certain things and expanding upon it so it is still your work and I guess what it comes down to when it's more frustrating or not with it's artists when you take it away right is when so it all comes down to like what's the intention because if you really love something and mm-hmm. this is what you were attached to, and then it changes in retrospect because the author says something. Like, I don't know the exact scenarios, like what, what's out there right now. Uh, with the J.K. Rowling thing, I think she... I do know that one. She decided to make, like, she said, I think Dumbledore is gay, something like that. But that, isn't that and it was part never of the... Even... Um, isn't that part of the... Like, what's the sequel series called? The movies that just came out. Not just came out, but the... Um, you know Fantastic know Beasts, yes. Where to Find Them. Yeah. Isn't that exploring that Dumbledore and... Yeah, it happened later on, but before that stuff was out... Basically, she was like, oh, yeah, I've always intended Dumbledore to be gay. And it was never. Okay. It wasn't even close. It was clearly like a shoehorned in way after the fact. And everyone was like, like, was it was it authentic? Yeah. Was was she just saying that to appeal or was she saying that? That's what most people think. Uh, I think there was also something with like I I fact check me if I'm wrong. I think she was saying something about like how Hermione Granger was actually supposed to be black. I think that was a thing. Never heard that. Yeah, I, I'm. I could be wrong. I, I could be bad here, but I thought that was something that she said that that's what she intended, even though like her character's pretty clearly described, and she was also the pe- the person who chose who played Hermione Granger in the movies. So yeah. doesn't make sense. It it was clearly a post, you know, a post change. Got it. So the debate then being. Do you so? What's the question here? Then, do you agree with the concept of authors, directors, artists being able to alter their media? What would you say? I generally don't like it. I, I guess they do have the right to do it. Uh, 
a good example would be Stephen King. <laughs> Uh, Stephen King wrote a book called Rage. Oh, yeah. And that book was n- not only found with one school shooter, but actually two. In their lockers or whatnot. Yeah, or it was in found in lockers. Rooms. And one in particular, one one particular school shooter actually basically copied the book almost like... Stephen King's book. Point that, for it point. It was fictional, but yeah, the but school no, shooter for real... Emulated everything in the yeah. book and just pulled the whole thing. And especially after the second one, Stephen King actually discontinued it from print and pulled all those copies. And mm-hmm. so now it is incredibly hard to find that book because he pulled it himself. Okay. But that, that's, an, that's a case of the author was like, hey, look, clearly this book is inspiring some mass shooters, even though it isn't Stephen King's fault. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, like, you know, the actual people who are at fault are the school shooters, not mm-hmm. the author. But still, he wanted to pull them. Yeah, the author can do what they want with their work, of course. So yeah. it's not, I guess, the a concept of an author affecting their own work, it's their work. I guess the viewpoint from the reader is you can take the, like, whether it's an edition you agree with later on or disagree with, you can still take the work for what it is and taking that whole separate the author versus, uh, separate the art from the artist, and you could still read it like that. But will it muddy your opinion if there's new information put in? I don't think a, there's anything wrong with editions. It's the replacement. And repl- okay. If you take away something, it, there should be a very good reason. The Star Wars one being the best example. Richard, thank you for the thoughtful question there. <laughs> that was not not you, Richard. That yeah, yeah. the other the better the, Richard. Uh, the other Richard. Yes. The other Richard. All right. Here's the next one. You want to add? This is from yeah. our patron, Josh. Oh, there we go. Hey, you want to support us? Pop down below in the description pop below down, there. Pop down, yeah. All right, Josh asks, uh, "What's y'all favorite book you've each read since creating a channel?" Easy answer for me. For you, it's Golden Sun. Golden Sun. I, it stunned me. I'm baffled. It is a perfect book. For me, it probably has to be Sword of Kagan. Phenomenal book. I love that book. Yeah. Sword of Kagan. I think I'm going to up my rating of that. Just an, I still think about it. Yeah, same. <laughs> Either great that book. or the First Law trilogy. I love First Law. It's great. So. It does. Next question we have from Lucas, another patron. There we go. Yes. Do we really need more Golden Sun content? As I said, it was my favorite. No. More coming Please. soon. Yes. More Golden oh Sun. Oh, my God. Then another patron from Moon Shadow Elf asks, what is an underrated book you've read? Ooh. Rich, mm. what's an underrated book you've read? Underrated? Underrated. So that's a different question than underappreciated. You know, yeah, lesser known. So there's lesser known books. Like I can say Piercing the Veil, for example, by Stephen Googlich, self-published author. Um, Like, you know, it, really? it's, yeah. it's not a big book. So it's not underrated as in it's still rated well. It's but rated well. It's, it's just under- doesn't have a huge yeah. reach. It doesn't have a huge audience. You know, more self. It's a self-published right. book. Underrated meaning a book that people think is kind of rough, but you really like. What's what's an answer Ooh. to that, Rich? I'm trying Best. to look through and think about it. I think I got maybe, one if you don't. But. Maybe even The Pariah? Uh... I liked it more than you. No, but that's rated pretty high. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's like... Oh, uh, then never mind. It's rated pretty high, and we uh, both of us thought it was all right. But mm. I'll toss one that's all... You're, there's probably going to be pushback on your end, um, mm-hmm. just because I think it is... It's. I think it is really well-liked. I just don't hear it enough. Oh. But I really like Warbreaker from Brandon Sanderson. And it mm. is... There, I think it is praised, and people do really like it. I just don't hear it enough. And so I'll say it's underrated just because... It's a great Sanderson book that doesn't... It, it's a great one, yeah. but yeah, I don't hear too much. Mainly because it's a standalone book and there's yeah. no there's no real, real planned... Fe- I know he is saying that there's supposed to be a sequel at some point in the future, but there's right. no real big plan for it, so... Yeah. yeah. Uh, Here's what else there's... Man, I'm, I'm looking through. I'm trying to think what is uh, underrated. Yeah. That's a tough question. That's the... The reason why it's tough is because our rating system rates things perfectly. So it's, nothing is over or underrated. It's just correctly rated. It's just correctly yeah, rated. That's the tough part, isn't it? <laughs> um, I would have to go with... Oh, shoot. Probably the Canis Trilogy. Fair. Fair. I think it's an underrated series. There you go. All right, this next question. You want to read this one off? Yep. Orcish Dad's asking... Uh, what is an overrated uh-huh. book you've read? Ooh. Well, mm. specifically overrated mm-hmm. by this guy over here. Uh-huh. Uh, Red Rising. I think it's significantly overrated. Fine. Hyperion. I yeah, think I... it's significantly overrated by you. 
Yeah, how, how's it feel? You're just incorrect. How's it feel, huh? <laughs> that you just tarnish a man's I, soul? I, I, you, no, I understand how much I hurt. You see that stab? Oh, yeah, exactly. I, I see it. It's mutual. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'd say, so you would say Red Rising. Yeah, probably. Damn you. Bloody damn you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually, my real answer is Hyperion. I do think it's overrated. Right? Uh, I oh, love Hyperion. Well, your real answer is not Red Rising. You know what your real answer is? Is Name of the Wind. Oh, yeah. Like that, that's, that would be the That's your real answer. answer because people love Name of the Wind. You hate it. Yeah, that, that is one of my most hated books. There you go. So Red Rising, you like some. Get that. I actually do like mouth. Red Rising. So, <laughs> next question by Orgish Dad was a patron. We also have another patron question from Artor- Art- Artorius, and he asks us, "What's a book you think every sci-fi slash fantasy fan should read before they die?" I mean, the standard answer always Lord is of Lord of the Rings. Uh, if for fantasy, um, for sci-fi, I think everyone has to read Ender's Game. Dune. That Dune isn't necessary i would personally add hyperion but some people don't think so um uh, for fantasy i think modern fantasy Lightbringer is honestly up there wow i think it's one of those like if you really want to pulse on the positive aspects of modern fantasy and what it brings to the table compared to classic fantasy Lightbringer has i think some of the best examples of what modern fantasy really is Good answer. I I mean I haven't read it yet, but you've talked yeah. very highly of it except for the ending. Yeah. Right? I mean so other than the ending, which is supposed to be very important. I'll toss out a strange one actually that yeah. I don't think we talk about enough on the channel. Mm. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy for a sci fi must read book. Reason I say that is although I it wasn't chapter to chapter I was like laughing my ass off the whole time but I will say by the end I've never laughed more ever in any book even Discworld which I love and it's hilarious I've never laughed more in a book while also getting a deep message out of a book where it's that Mm -hmm. kind of a central reading of one I have tears in my eyes laughing at a certain scene in the book but then the book finished and I sat and contemplated and went wow that is a powerful message for such a silly book and there's a reason why it's so popular. So I'd say yeah. it's also a short book. Yeah. So it's an it's, I'd say essential sci-fi reading. Just get that one done. You'll get something from it. Mm. And there you go. Fantasy, I think, of course, Lord of the Rings. I mean, it's, it's your classic. <laughs> yeah. All right, next question we have is from... Oh, I said the last one. Sorry, I, I've, been, I've been bully pulpiting you the whole time here. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, but... Joe Mager. No, it, I'm pretty sure... Joe Mager. Yes, Joe Mager, I okay. think. Got it, got it. He'll he'll correct me later. Um, are there any quotes in reading that have made an impact on your real life? Um, probably Dalinar Dalinar Colin. That was my uh, answer. The, oh, that's kind of important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a it's a very important scene. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That is kind of an important. Whoopsie. <laughs> <laughs> I I muted it. Don't worry. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> But uh, for people who have read The Wheel of Time and Complete, Completion, yeah. a certain character on top of a certain mountaintop uh, saying a certain line and the whole speech, that was very impactful to me. That you was, did a good job of keeping that spoiler free. I have oh, no clue what nice you're talking and vague. about. Oh, nice it's, and vague. It's nice and vague. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no way you're going to get spoiled from that one. Yes. But definitely the, the Stormlight quote, which the, mm-hmm. the quote from Dalinar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Early on for me, I thought Ender's Ender's Game. Uh, the I'm trying to remember the exact quote, but it's mainly the internal dialogue that Ender has when he is Game confronting the bully. Ball. Yeah, yeah. That was a very impactful. I mean, now it's not that uh, surprising anymore with modern. But I remember reading as a kid, like that kind of forward thinking of like you don't just beat the bully now. You you. One, if you just win one battle, it's not enough. You have to win the war. Yeah, beating him beyond, uh, beyond the point that no one else is going to come after him. Yeah, that was really impactful. It, show, it shows you his mind oh, and yeah. how he had, how he's, why he's the chosen one in this yeah. case as well. Great, yeah. Okay, the next question we have is from Mads. Okay, the question here is, how has the channel creation impacted your friendship? What is the biggest fight and difference in opinion? First off, Rich, you 
a channel can't impact a friendship that was never there. Yeah, it's purely business. That's the first thing, okay? Yeah. So Mads, don't get it twisted. <laughs> but how has the channel creation impacted your friendship? What would you say to that? Honestly, it just forces us, forces us to spend more time together. Yeah, it's a really negative thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's impressive. The biggest difference we've had is I have... I really wanted to do a like chapter by chapter <laughs> oh, review of a book. Yeah, like that is our biggest difference. Where in yeah. it would kind of be, I wanted it to either be like a really quick series or we film yeah. every chapter mm-hmm. and then we mush it together into one video yeah. so someone could actually do like a read along with us. It would be like a chapter by chapter read along or every five chapters, something. Like the that. logistics of that to where each of us are yes. reading a chapter at the same time. By the way, our reading speeds, you know, like I'm still way behind and stuff. Yeah. But it's us going, reading chapter, reviewing it, chapter one of the channel, reading second chapter, reviewing chapter two. It's it's logistically tough. I like the ambition, no. but it's that's a tough that's a tough we task. Could do it. That was a that was a big difference there. Yeah, I, I guess. So how has it impacted our friendship? Yeah, we spend more time together. Um, it's weird. We haven't gotten. It, I, I'd say it's gotten us closer in many ways yeah i mean all yeah. I mean, the honesty, corny answer yes yeah the corny yes, answer is yes. that because so. it's more of a now not like hey do you want to go grab something to eat we actually have like to rely on each other for things and yep. actually trust each other yeah for not meaningless stuff yeah there's like an, an innate trust now that is not there with normal friends like, of course you trust your friends mm-hmm. but having the channel and the i mean everything put into it now there's a the time and finance like no seriously it's like is, it, it's as far as trusting with my my like hey if <laughs> i'm just saying i'm the trust gals it's like mom dad richard <laughs> like, <laughs> of just how deep in the shit we are now of like yeah, what, what we've had right. what we've had to do to keep this running and everything in the background so it's i mean it's pretty much that you know yeah sounds about right but that's the only thing you're third on the list. Everything else, you're bottom tier. So yeah, don't worry. of course. <laughs> All right, the next one is from Sir Zeth. Oh, sorry, this is from Samuel. Samuel, yeah. his, his, he changed his name for some reason to that. So Samuel asks, what are books, whether read for the channel or not, that have literally changed your life? Not necessarily favorites, but the ones that have changed you as a person. Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Being more stoic? Being more stoic, and it definitely put more, put general thoughts and preconceived notions that I kind of already had. It's not like I went 180 as a person. Right. It reinforced I kind of some already, ideas you had. Yeah, and it just put it into interesting context and fit it in a way where instead of a vague idea of how to address a situation it put it into clearer words that mm-hmm. I'm able to easily process. And I think it, it worded it very well to give me a good mental framework. Great answer. Great. An- I haven't read meditations yet, but from mm-hmm. what you taught me about it and what you, what, you know, we, we talked about it a lot. It's like, Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that seems like a good way to live. <laughs> or just generally yeah. the advice is good to not worry over things that you can't control. There's a lot more lessons than that, but just certain oh, you know, yeah. surface levels like that. Of course. Oh so. no, there, there's so many, yeah, so many different things that I was, interested in in my life that were just not important. important. It's like why why worry about something that you have literally zero control over and it, especially like different arguments like you know you get in you go to college and you like argue about like politics and then just kind of realizing which like, is the worst thing in, well, the, in the world. Politics <laughs> can be fun. Politics is fun to discuss. I enjoy it. I'm interested. However, there's no reason to put like emotional weight behind most political discussions because what the hell am I going to do? That That's what I meant by the worst. The worst part of it is like, yeah. Well, yeah. You know, why? Who cares? Why? <laughs> Ultimately, no, like, if whoever you're having a conversation with, unless you're talking with, like, the leader of the free world, <laughs> no, nothing's going to happen. Like, why, why put emotional weight into Richard in the basement who thinks taxes should be this way? He has zero influence <laughs> on the policy of not just this country, yeah. but this municipality. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Why care? So, yeah, good, great answer for meditations. I'd say for me, hmm. it's small gods. Really? I, Interesting. And it's one of those things that has crept up on me. Mm. 
and small gods, I won't give spoilers to it, but I will say something about the message of small gods. And why, and by the way, it's not really a spoiler heavy book. It's there for the enjoyment. So you don't mm-hmm. have to really skip this part. But something about faith that I learned from small gods is, you know, we've we've struggled where we're like, you know, we want to believe and we're having this conversation and, you know, we're in this mm-hmm. we're in this conversation about like it's God and religion and all this. And small gods has this character brother who takes faith from a perspective that I never really thought of. It kind of takes the dumb religious guy that, you know, as a, like I'm a skeptical person, right? So it takes mm-hmm. the, you know, I've been religious in my life. I've been in. Um, I, Another way to say asshole. You've said it better. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, this, this skeptical and, you know, you, tr- you think you're rational. It's like, oh, I got to think all this stuff through. But brother took this epitome of the quote unquote dumb religious person who just believes and made that into a good thing. Yeah. And I looked at that and the message that was told in the life that brother lived. And it's it kind of made me go to this point of maybe I don't believe God exists right now, but I will act as if God does exist kind of situation. Where Does that make any sense? Did oh, yeah. I illustrate that? It, it kind of came across to me of he took the best virtue out of basically realizing that you're an idiot why shouldn't you trust right. someone that you place high authority in? For it, for mm-hmm. brother, it was his mother, or no, his grandma. He trusts his grandma with no questions. No questions. Yeah, of course he did. Mm-hmm. He he didn't think he was very smart. He's like, you know what? Instead of trusting myself, because who am I? I'm going to trust my grandmother. Yeah, she's brilliant, and that appeals to my stupidity. Yeah, like what if if who not God, if not God? What I'm trusting me. Like, do I really think that I am smarter than, like, Aristotle? <laughs> really? Am I, am I smarter than him? No. No, I'm not. <laughs> so why, why should I trust myself? Like, oh, who ca- Richard, Richard doesn't believe in God. Well, who cares what Richard thinks? <laughs> Richard's an idiot. Yeah. I should trust smarter people. You said it. I'm clipping that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, the small guys really did just, it's, it's crept up on me of that. Mm-hmm you know may, maybe i'm not fully there yeah but why not just a, a sneaking yeah. a sneaking message there of it was it was very well done and here's the fascinating thing is terry pratchett is it's an atheist avid atheist oh yeah very much like yeah, he wrote this profoundly down. compelling religious he and, definitely did no, not intend that no he no the thing is but. he wrote it kind of it made it both made fun of religion but also showed the value of religion at the same time. Such that's a nature with book. real artists. True artists show that completely. And yeah, yeah. I'm talking. I'm talking. True artists cannot. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a real thing with real art. Is despite some artists like pre preconceived notions, if they're truly passionate and they are trying to pursue the truth, mm-hmm. the truth kind of comes out whether they want to or not. Yeah, and that normally comes across in good product. Yeah. And so you'll get something, something, something more interesting that they did not intend out of it. You know what I think we officially turned into today? Hmm. A real podcast. Ah, yeah. Where it's a, <laughs> you ever see those podcast clips of like those random cringy things? It's like, meditations, bro. Meditations <laughs> is the way to go. And then you have these other things. It's like, it's like, why? It's like, why faith? Like, why not believe, bro? Like, I think we had yeah. at least 20 of those moments just now. Yeah. We're a podcast. <laughs> We're now a podcast. Uh, and uh, last last thing I want to mention, because I had a little note here, um, with a character from a book that changed my perspective on things was Takaru from mm. Sword of Kagan. And I don't want to spoil that, but... I think it's Kagan. Oh, yeah, it probably is. But yes, that was not one. All right, this next one's from Jake. Go ahead. Read this one, Rich. Uh, Jake's asking, what improvement have you made from your early beginnings that you're most proud of? I'm assuming with the podcast. I'm assuming so. Because if and it's in life, not much. Well, yeah, not, with not with the podcast, what do you think has been the biggest improvement that you made, Richard? That I made? Yes. I mean, sound equipment. I poured Sounds more better. money into sound. <laughs> no, you, you got more than that. Sound you equipment, got- lights. I mean, just better shot composition. Uh, I'm pretty proud of my bookshelf. I threw that together in a weekend because we needed something better than a blank wall. <laughs> that, that that was a great improvement. So I mean, it was you, a good improvement. Yes, I'd say for I'm gonna put you in this answer as well for biggest improvement. So you look at our early videos of how we talked and just 
how we bounced back and forth or asked questions or tried to elaborate on answers. One big improvement has just been, it, because off camera, it's like easy to talk. It's easy to conversate. And you don't have to, quote unquote, impress an audience or keep people engaged. And it's not that we change our vocabulary a whole ton. It's just we now know there's a conversation to have in front of a camera. It's your personality, mm-hmm. but put into a situation of, it's a, it's a weird thing to explain. Where there's, you, you there's know a there's flow. a camera on us right now. So it's it's a different kind of thing to get used to where you, we're uncomfortable at first. Of we, we weren't talking normally in front of the camera because it's like, oh, now we're online. And just you could tell from our early episodes, it was very off. Certainly. And then we just got better and better over time of like, okay, it's just, it's there. And then getting more, trying to be more natural, but with also being stupid. and No, the, there's a, it's kind of the same thing with, acting on a stage so stage acting is a little different from regular camera acting because you have because the distance Uh, away from the actor on a stage is so far the actor themselves has to emote larger than they would normally person to person however to the person in the back of the theater it looks completely normal it doesn't look exaggerated to the person in the back but to the actor who's playing it it looks exaggerated and that's okay. the same thing with makeup. The reason why you put on makeup when you're on stage is not to, like, it's not supposed, to, you're supposed to tell they have makeup. It's just to, to you, it looks like you have exaggerated eye lines, eyeliner on. But to the person in the back of the room, you just now can see their eyes. So the okay. same thing with a camera is, yes, you're not exactly like putting on a performance but you do have to reach out. You have to There's another present. party in the conversation. They're further away from us, and so you have to present yourself a little bit more exaggerate, a little bigger than life to be able to reach them. Just like you would if, you know, if you're at a wedding talking at your table versus giving a speech at the wedding. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the little nuance, the little nuances of a regular conversation between two people in private. Yeah can be more intimate and you can see the little tiny oh, details. Oh, we have intimate conversations, you'd say? Eh, huh? It's an example. Okay. It's not a personal example. <laughs> but well, well, for example, camera. that thing that I just did about saying, oh, we have a little intimate conversation, I don't think a normal conversation, I might not say that because yeah. it's like no one else is in on the fun. Like, yeah. well, you know what I mean? Like, why, otherwise, I just let you talk and be like, I just let you talk and then I'd sit there normally and just be like, all right, when's he done? When can I? Because the podcast keeps me here to listen to you. <laughs> normal conversation, I could just walk away. <laughs> it's so beautiful. It's so great. Oh, God. I do love a good Irish goodbye. It's yeah. my favorite way just to leave up a party. And leave. <laughs> You've done that several occasions. To where's, yeah. where's Rich? Oh, he's gone. He was, it's, no, where's Rich? He was never here. It's he was, my favorite thing is to, I, I don't like going to parties. I like hosting parties because I yep. can at any time during the during the whole party and get together, I can leave and go to, and go to my room, yeah, go to sleep. Yeah. I can take a break, take a reading break. I don't know. Do whatever. And yeah. it's my house. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Who cares? And th- maybe I'll come back. Maybe <laughs> two hours later. It doesn't matter. That's my favorite thing about hosting parties. Oh, my God. I get to leave early. <laughs> It's, you're not even lying. But that's the truth of it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go through some a little bit quicker, and then we'll okay. spend more time on the more um, the more engaging ones because we Rapid got a lot fire. of questions. A lot of questions here. So this one's from Zanaya, who asks, "What's a book you wish you had written?" Nightwatch by Terry Pratchett is far and away mine. What's one you wish you wrote? Ooh, wish I wrote. Oh shoot, that's a hard one. Um, I mean, Lord of the Rings, eh, but. Other than that, I really wish I wrote The Emperor's Soul. By Brandon Sanderson. That one really speaks to me. I, mm. I I really emotionally connected to that book, and I would love to pick Brandon Sanderson's brain on that one. Why Is, is it specifically because how the message impacted you? Well, and it's the message and the themes by of By the it. way, forget yeah. what I said about being rapid. Just, it's fine. Take as, yeah. long, as, take as long as we want. It's yeah. fine. Uh, I, it was a bad idea. Of like, it was a bad I, idea. Was a bad asking idea. Yeah. us to be quick yeah, about something. Yeah, just, just elaborate. What were you saying? <laughs> well, I just... The nature of art with yeah. Emperor's Soul and the artist and the connection that an yeah. artist has to her, to, to her art, I personally think there is maybe an illusion or a theme of motherhood in that book that um, my mother actually talk to me about it. I was like I, I, I really see it and I would really love to ask Sanderson if that's something he saw when writing that character and writing that story yeah because I haven't really seen that online when he's talked about it briefly 
I would love to pick his brain on that. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to give the corny answer, hmm. the bad answer of, I don't think I have one. Because uh, although I love a lot of books, of course, but I just can't imagine, like, not one. I, I, the book I wish I had written is the one I'm going to write. That's, that's my corny answer, I guess. Because something like the, the books I think are 10 out of 10s and unbelievable. It would mean nothing would, if yeah. you took it. Yeah. I, that, that's, it's a bad answer, but I'm sorry. I'm, I'm bad with <laughs> it. Next question is from Gabriella, who asks, a book series or standalone you would love to see adapted into a movie slash show? Mm. I'll throw out my name. I need to see Red Rising on screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> I need to see Red Rising on screen. I would love to see Rage of Dragons. Rage of Dragons, we, so one in terms of like diversity on screen and I'm just not a bit I'm not typically a big fan of race swapping characters because normally I just find it kind of cheap it's like why are we you know I, I, I don't see why people of color want you know white character sloppy seconds when they can just have their own character and it'd be original it's great so Rage of Dragons is all black cast all of them I don't want to see one single pasty white guy in that. Henry Cavill, no. I, no Henry Cavill. No Ryan Gosling. It is all black characters. It's like, you know, you know who them. annoys me the most in Be Black great. Panther? Hmm. Is, what's his name? Martin, um, uh, um... Bilbo. Bilbo, yes. Yeah, no. He's like, why, is, why he is he there? I don't know why He doesn't there. belong there. No. I don't want him there. <laughs> but anyways, you think Rage of Dragons, as a story, it's, why would it be cool on screen? Well, one, it's your gladiator revenge story it's uh i think it'd have a really great you know compelling main character the action scenes would be amazing be more fantasy stuff that i would love on screen and there's dragons in it and so you could have it basically it would appeal to everyone no one could complain it would just be a great story yeah now next question we have from sam who asks who would win out of Tudor Ramble's rating system and a small army of Red Rising one-star reviewers. Well, seeing as Rich would be a part of that one-star reviewers... Yeah. I, I have to rate it one star just to drag down your five stars so just, it equals out to up. a three. Just, okay, next question. Right where it belongs. Next question is from Megano, who asks, have either of you read Second Apocalypse by R. Scott um, Baker? We have not. Have not. And next one we have from Devo, who asks, will you review The Gentleman Bastards? I want to. I really like the series. If he'll get around to reading it. I haven't read it. I'm so underwhelmed. Here's I'm... the thing though. In our secret in our in our secret archive mm-hmm. of videos, um, I did record a Lies of Lock Lamora. A Lies of Lock Lamora. Is that review. Gentleman Bastard or Yeah, that's Gentleman Bastard. Oh, it is. That was with um our friend. Yep. He was over for a party and he read the book and so we were recording that while everyone else was playing poker. Mm-hmm. I was drunk as a skunk. Oh, very drunk. But I think that that review was great. It's somewhere. I know you have it somewhere. I don't know where it is. I'm, I'll have to look through the archives. It's, it's somewhere it's in, in the, the archive. It's in the vault. So technically, I have recorded a Liza Locke Lamora review. It's just, it needs to go through. It's, uh, it's not PG-13. It's not R-rated. It's like triple X. It's, it's yeah. Like, it's, yeah, that was. It's rich. When we meet, I you don't were, remember the entire night. So I don't think I remember the entire recording session. I haven't even watched a recording ever. Do you it's need just, to watch it? I don't know I how imagine, bad it is. Ooh, I just remember hearing just every so fun. often you scream and go, ah, da, 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 is rambling. I think, I think uh, one of my friends hit me in the. Hit me in the nuts during one of it. Like, I think that's happened to me. I vaguely remember that. I don't remember that, but it's probably happened. <laughs> yeah. All right, next one is from Will. You want to read Will's question? Yeah, Will. Uh, what are your top three friendships from any book or book series you've read? Honestly, Gentleman Bastards is up there. Um, so Locke and Jean, probably. Uh, of course, Frodo and Sam. Third, I really love... Matt from the Wheel of Time, and he is the bestest of friends. He is the best friend that everyone should aspire to be. I can't believe you're leaving out some essential friendships from your list. There's a lot of them out. Kaladin and Syl. That's a great one. <laughs> and I will harp back to brother and Ohm from Small Gods. I don't know if that's as much as a friendship. That it's almost... is a friendship. It's like an it's an enemies to bros friendship. You know it is. I just wouldn't even define it as friends. They are friends. They're best buds. It's a different relationship. What would you call them? 
companions. Oh, I don't. No, because they do change over time, and yeah. it's well. So it's do, a weird so does a Kaladin and Adeline. I guess, but like friendship typically implies this kind of mutual, um, mutual respect and mutual standing that Ohm and brother don't really have. That's what makes it such an interesting friendship. It's like it's our friendship. Like you look up to me in my <laughs> pedestal. Like there's a lot of things that you just won't ever have, Richard. I know exactly what you and mean. And that's hair. <laughs> it was just the hair. And I, I, all my joke, all I can say is the bold joke. That's all I got yeah. on you now. <laughs> all right. The next one is from Dylan. And Dylan asks, has Austin read Hyperion yet? And what are his thoughts? Now, as you saw earlier in this pod episode, I have read it. I didn't like it. And we both have a pod episode on it. Um, Incorrect. To, oh, well, to ask what my thoughts were, the short version of my thoughts on Hyperion is it was a very character focused story. And I love character focused stories. And especially in being in sci-fi, it's a little bit more rare. I'd say, actually, my answer will be way too long. But do you want? Me, what do you think? You let me know whether you want to move on or give a quick, try to quick answer. Yeah, try and give a quick. Okay, answer. the the try to quick answer is it follows seven characters throughout the story, and some of them I'm very interested in. Others I really didn't like the specific story or the character. And as it moves on, it's structured for like, hey, part one is story from character. One part two is you know all character two story and woven in between there is what's happening in the present day, correct? So mm-hmm. I didn't Can't feel tales. yeah. So my feelings we'll have a whole episode on this. Don't worry, so you can rebut. But my feelings on it were that the the stories and the investment and the time that was spent with all the characters and then mixing that with the modern day, I didn't feel any payoff in the modern day or in the present of the story and the building up of what we learned about the characters and their personalities, which some were like kind of all right stories. I didn't feel it meshed well with the story that was going on in the present day and didn't care as much because these things that even if I was invested in something earlier on seemed to kind of just drop off or not be important, at least in book one. So to be fair. So the reason why I liked book one a lot is because the characters' stories built to explain the mystery of the world. And for me, even if the character, so like the console character, yeah, character wise, I don't care. I really don't care. I mean, about the general, character. the colonel character, like a uh. colonel character is a bit more interesting when I gave him some thought. Yeah. I I liked his perspective, like what he brought to the table as a character. Yeah, I don't particularly care, but what they all bring to the table to explain about, about the, the world and, and well, no, just everything about the so the console's character. The wor- was no, the world is great. I'll give you that. I'm the I'm and that's the, the whole thing. on the rating scale though. World building's very high. Emotional yeah. impact characters are just really now. Here's low. the thing: in the second book, all of their characters are given a type of conclusion, which I have to yet their to read. Yes, so, so we're, we can have a whole discussion on a pod episode. For that's this, the so, thing. Yeah. First book was all world and the mystery of the world, and that was explored incredibly well to me, and that's what I liked about it. Fair enough. And you are a world driven reader. I'm a character driven reader. Yeah. So for the most part. Next question: You want to read this one off from? I'll read this one. from Frey or Fry. How do you want it's, to? It's it's say, say it correctly. I'll be nice to him. It's Fry. Like it is Stephen Fry. Fry. Yeah, it is Fry. Uh, anyway. Fry is a patron of ours. This is Fry's question. He pays. I'm gonna. We gotta be. I'm r- gonna give him his real <laughs> name. I guess fine. <laughs> he pays ten dollars a month. We can call him by his real name. Fry's going like, wait, why are they charging me fifteen? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Fry is asking, how often do you go back and change your previous ratings, and do you trust yourself at all when it comes to rating books, since every new book impacts your overall perception of what is good, bad, or average literature? Great question. And in the beginning, I changed my ratings a lot more. But as I read more, my ratings kind of became more solid. So it's basically once you start really developing what your five is and what your 10 is, everything starts falling into place. And once I kind of found my five and really settled on it, it, it just, you change less and less as it goes on. Yeah, good answer. And for, for me, so do I go back and change ratings? Yes. I'd say, especially, so I just mentioned earlier, sort of Kagan, if something sticks with me and grows on me over time, because some books maybe don't hit you at first. Take time, and if they have a, if they have legs to them and longevity, of course it's going to be rated higher because it's still with you, and that then it'll be rated higher. And I guess yeah, they'll adjust over time. And so my favorite books now are going to be different than a year from now, and they'll change. So mm-hmm. and also at different points in your life, you might like something more when you're older or when you're younger. So of course, yeah. 
Now, next question is from Trash Ed X, and he asks, other than Avatar: Last Airbender, what are your favorite animated shows? Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Answer that. Also, and I'll add on to that. I really love Castlevania. Neat. And there's a new Cast- season coming out, isn't yep, there? Yeah, I am very hyped for that. This question from Sam says, top five books series for me. Okay, we can't. That's going to be a separate video. That's that's a big question. Wheel of time for me. Just, <laughs> there just you put go. that there. It just, it's number one, of course, for it's you. one. Now, this one's from Stoic Bibliophile. Asks, have either mm-hmm. of you read Dresden Files by Jim Butcher? No. <sighs> it's on my shelf. I see it over there. I need to read it. <laughs> it feels it feels so bad. All all these questions about have you read this? Have you read? No, we're, we're booktubers, and no, we haven't read books. We we suck. <laughs> this next one's from Lex. You want to read this one? When are you gonna do the full review of First Law? <laughs> when he finishes the book, I hate I hate these questions. Now. I can't. This that, is becoming okay. Here's the ultimate challenge: is if the booktubers, I I now completely understand why yeah. booktubers are, is a solo act and it's one person because they read the thing and then they can just talk about the thing. I read a thing and I can't talk about it because he's here. And even then, it, let's say like I actually record it's Mom. just me. He still edits it, so he has to. Like, he'll be spoiled if he reads like if he's editing the video. So the only thing we can comment on things well, is if we both free. read it. Spoiler free pitches as well. I already did the one right. on first. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, next question. <laughs> next question is from Jamie, and Jamie asked, "Who would win in a full shard plate slash blade duel between you two?" And Jamie says, "Team Austin for the win." Let's go. Cue the music. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know why I went Home Depot there, but let's go. Here's the thing. Athletic wise, yes, you got it on. You got oh, it on. Okay. Here's the thing, though. I weigh significantly more than you. Well, here's the thing. And here's weight what, advantage is hard to Here's what to you're get forgetting. Is you, oh, it's shard plate. It's full sh- shard plate. Well, not just shard plate and shard blade. You have light eyes. I have dark eyes. That you would true. automatically have an advantage. Because don't... I mean, dark eyes are just... Uh, well, if I... Well, no. If you put on the shard plate and... I would have light you eyes. You would have I? light eyes. Uh, okay. I was trying to give you something. I was trying yeah, to... No. I was trying to show like that I'm humble, but I freaking wreck you know <laughs> that would be fun to fight with sharp plate though because we'd whack at each other and nothing would happen yeah i don't know i i for some reason i just don't think you have that that darrow rage ferocity in you. i don't think you have that you've got you. that but here's the thing you can go feral but for like 20 seconds yeah <laughs> <laughs> all i have to do is survive the 22nd initiative and then he's like, oh, shit, that's all. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> this next question is from Variance Reviews and asks, if Richard and Austin were placed in the Institute, who would more likely become Primus? Oh, all these questions about... Oh, man. In all... In all okay, this? all yeah. honesty, Austin. However... Why, though? Explain the that. Physicality, one. Oh. The, you're beating me there. The one thing you have going against you yeah. is your head. <laughs> Like I wouldn't be intelligent enough no, to be no. like, oh, it's, uh, the, 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 the soldiers are. Uh, da, 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 da. No, here's the thing: you're smart, but you're tunnel focused. You can't like focus on multiple things at once. When you like, when a tiny problem comes up, you'll spend the whole day on that instead of going like, oh, I need to like do other stuff. I would imagine prime like you have to like be able to juggle multiple things. Austin, I think I can do that. You can't attack Jupiter. We're literally getting attacked by three other factions. But the plan, <laughs> Jupiter's right there. We almost got, but all of them are dying behind you. <laughs> you got to do something. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the the only thing is you have tunnel vision. But that's, other than that, that that's you would look, look. I would I would delegate. Yeah, I would be like Rich. Ba- no, basically, see, I would. What we here's the thing: I would team. take Primus and say, Rich, do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, that's the thing. I think I would take the role of like delegate, the strategist. See, I could point you in a direction, and then you would just like tunnel vision. You would get the job done because you focus on nothing else, and you would get it done. Uh, good answer. Good answer. Uh, realistically, I think um, we, if we were in the institutes, you mm-hmm. and I, if we knew each other as well going in, we would have to vouch for one of us getting Primus. We would have to push ourselves into a position to where we had the power going out yeah. because we want the most benefits in the end so we'd have to strategize see who we could trust also see like you know if we could get a group of just six or seven start off from there and i would love uh, i yeah. really do want like 
a great crew of guys. I want that. All so of our much. friends watching are like, "What? We're not great." No, you're not. You need to <laughs> just. Here's the thing. I like my friends. Love my friends. Yeah, They're great. Yeah. But when all of us walk into a room, it does not exude a uh, a vibe of intimidation. It we're it's just a bunch of doughy white boys walking into a room, and it's not great. It's not a great vibe. I would love we, to walk when, into when a room. When our friend, when when me and my friends walk into a room, we make it a worse place. It's like yes, we, it's exactly. People, people it. look and they go, "It just got more boring." <laughs> that's exactly it. I would now. Here's the thing. That's not just me saying like I need better friends. No, yeah. it's I want my friends to be better, and I need myself to be better. There you go. That's the sending thing. the olive branch. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, it. This next one is from Joel, who asks, "Where are you both from?" And where do you guys see yourselves in five years? What's your number one goal? Great questions. Now, let's break that down. First one, where are you both from? I'm from New Mexico. I am from New York. Uh, where do we see ourselves in five years? Hopefully still doing podcast stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm hopefully be doing pretty well in my career. Um, making good money. I don't know if my career will be mm-hmm. this or it will be my current career, but... We will see. Hell yeah. And in five years from now, I will be a fantasy author. A good one? Probably not. But there will but be a book. will be There will be a author. book. My name will be there, and at least two copies will be sold. Richard will not be the one that bought that. It will be somebody else, but... I expect a free copy. Man. I demand a free copy. I'll charge you double. <laughs> I, I swear, if I'm not in the honorable mentions, in your well, book, a free copy. I you're will... gonna have like all the drafts. That is true. And then like the the, the same thing we got from sigils as well with that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Basically that version as well. You can, of course, you can have whatever. But then, what's your number? Oh, so yeah, in five years from now, that and also the pod intentions to see. Hopefully, now, it's still going and. Best case scenario mm-hmm. is podcast is full time doing other stuff with it and mm-hmm. branding wise and maybe publishing. That would be fun. Have to paid editors, have that stuff. Well, I would love to move every six months and go around country. the world. This is our plan. We yeah. agree. Every Basically, six months, every six new months, country. New country, learn language, move. Lovely. That would, because like I was able to get conversational in eight weeks in, in Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. So when I was in Spain, I was able to, I've lost a lot of it now, unfortunately, because I haven't practiced, but see, yeah, <laughs> but no, that would be six months. Yeah. That's a solid amount of well, time. It's a, would that be one of your number one goals that Joel asked then to learn another language? That and interview Brandon Sanderson. That is a number one. So for the podcast, number one goal is interview Brandon Sanderson. Yeah. Number one goal, obviously book, book for me. And in five years though, podcast wise, where do you want the pod to be? Because we both intend on, we want it to be successful and continue to do it, obviously. But in five years from now. I would love to actually get into, if we had a large enough platform and base of people around Mm -hmm. us, it would be really fun to get into publishing and being able to publish indie uh, indie authors and kind of promote them. And so they reach further heights. Because one of the biggest problems with indie authors is they don't have that initial boost at the beginning that marketing that, so yeah. uh, most books are word of mouth mm-hmm. like no matter how much well you market a book through ads or whatever oh, it's by not, marketing i mean the word of mouth is the marketing so, yeah so you that need to get faces the only way, there but yeah. to get word of mouth marketing you need a seed audience you need enough people to pick it up when it yep, drops exactly. for it to spread and indie authors have a hard time doing that so if we had a platform i think that'd be a lot of fun to do Maybe totally we could agree. do that in five years. Probably it's going to be longer. Who knows? But in our list of things, that was so we want website, a rating website, publishing company. We a lot of aspirations, and we'll see. We'll see we'll if see we're, we we're going to try. <laughs> this next one's from S. Hughes, who asks, what would you consider your least favorite book that you've read all the way through? And are there any really popular books you've had to put down early on? Uh, Actually, I put down Rage yeah. of Dragons. Just because yeah, I read a little bit of it, then some I got. It's not that I didn't like it. You didn't get to the main yeah. instant, though. No, I, I think I was reading it. Then I had to read. You know what it was? Hmm. This is exactly what it was. So this is a story I haven't said on the podcast yet, but I was reading Rage of Dragons, and all of a sudden, I think our roommate Justin was reading Rhythm of War. Remember Book Four of Stormlight Archive? Mm. And what happened was, um, I was. I wasn't. I go one book at a time usually when I can. But Rhythm of War, Justin, our roommate, kept making fun of me because he was gonna finish Stormlight before me, 
And like I do this, you know, I'm reading all this stuff like I'm supposed to read more and have the podcast. So he was making fun of me saying, oh, I'm about to finish it before you. So what I did is I dropped Rage of Dragons and secretly. So I, I had my bookmark on page one of Rhythm of War. So every time he went in my room, he always looked and saw that I hadn't read a page. And he was like halfway, three quarters through the book. I was secretly reading it every day. Audiobook, physical, audiobook, physical. Because he was he intended to finish it by that week. So I had like five days or whatever to finish the book. So I just scrammed through it, finished it. And so then when Justin, our roommate, had the conversation with you, like he was trying to make fun of me going, oh, Rich, I finished it. I can't wait to talk about blah, blah, blah. And then I just stood up and went, oh, yeah, like that scene that happened? Like that scene. And I, I said like a scene at the end that happened. And he looks over at me and goes, oh. <gasps> you didn't and then i told him yeah i was secretly reading anyways i think that was the whole reason why i dropped rage of dragons because i had to beat him to finishing rhythm of war so he couldn't make fun of me yeah you gotta get back on that one I there's will. so many books you gotta get back to there is uh for me the least favorite book i've read all the way through is name of the wind by a lot by a wide margin that's one. mine would be Arter ben yeah that's fair and then one I had to put down pretty early on is Jade City. If you actually pull it, my bookmark is still oh, there. There it is. It's still there from over a year There's ago where I stopped in the book. <laughs> you have to get back to that. I guess. I thing is, I know it's good. I I know it. It's for some reason I could not connect with the characters and just wasn't interested. We have a question then from Godsmack who says, "Wheel time, great hunt review soon." Yes. <laughs> I hope. Oh man, it's it's coming. It's coming. It's got, I, you know how we've had a lot of comments about it. I will. I know. Next question. You want to read this from Landon? Yeah. Uh, who are your favorite authors of all time? What are your top five books of all time? Why is Austin much cooler than Richard? <laughs> who wears the pants in your relationship? This is the second comment that has dissed Richard. Listen, fans. I call you fans now. I'm saying it because apparently. Well, now they're your fans. Apparently, <laughs> they're Austin stands, and I'm here for it. So. Uh. What? It's okay. So, they, you know, people the, like people like rooting for the underdog. Good response. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love how the question. So, let's the top five books of all time. We'll, we'll have a separate video on that because it's a lot yeah. to get into. Uh, but the question of why is Austin so much cooler than Richard? Follow up with who wears the pants in the relationship. <laughs> what, what a series of questions there. <laughs> yeah. Thing is, we both have stuff on each other that it would like. I, I could say something and be like, it's like, that's why I wear the pants. And then you would say something else. And How like about this? Totally you, drop it. Like, you wear the left leg. I wear the right. That's, oh, I was about to say something that was not very YouTube friendly. <laughs> <laughs> well, then let's answer the question we can. Who are your favorite <laughs> authors of all time? Terry Pratchett for me. Sanderson. Rob, Robert Jordan. Um, say Sanderson. You know it. It's true. As a living author. Yeah. Sanderson. Yeah, he's an incredible author. And yeah. Oh, Pierce Brown. I really love Pierce Brown now, of course. Um, Terry Pratchett, I'm going to join you. I love Terry Pratchett so much, but I haven't read enough Discworld. You've only read I, one. Exactly. I, I talk so much praise about Small Gods. I assume I'll be honest. Of, I think the next others. one you have to read is Going Postal. Okay. That one you'll like. Didn't you say earlier to read Guards, Guards? Yeah. But you just switched up on me. But I'm it's, been, up it's such a long podcast, you're forgetting your own answer. Oh, exactly. I never think about what I'm going to say. I don't have to remember what I've said before. True. You're, you're fine. It's fine. You're fine. And next question. This is relevant to what we just answered. Okay. You need to... Oh, this is from John, by the way. He says, okay, you need to choose Red Rising or Stormlight Archive. Stormlight Archive. Easy. Stormlight Archive for me as well. Mainly yeah. because of the ending. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've read... I finished Dark Age just yesterday. Dark Age was great, but I will say as a whole so far, Stormlight is still my number one. Mm -hmm. Next question is from Red Storm Rising, who asks, "Who is your favorite side character slash sidekick in sci fantasy, sci fi fantasy?" What would you say to that, Richard? Mm. Who's your favorite side character? The side character. I mean, Gollum is probably up there. If I had to pick a side character, <sighs> would you consider Takaru from Sword of Kaigen a side character? Barely. He's kind of a main character, but I guess he's a side character. If he's a side character, that's my answer. That's a good answer. If he's a side character, but he's mm. very he's on that cusp. He doesn't have his own perspective. So you'd say it's Masaru and Masaki who are your main characters, right? So I'd say Takaru for me. Would you say maybe to help you gear towards your answer, something wheel of time? West. West. Uh, Co Colonel West in the First Law trilogy. Okay. No, no one from Wheel of Time, really. 
a oh, plenty, but there's. Oh, okay. I don't even think there is a side character in Wheel of Time. They just have so much. Like, there's just characters. Yeah. There's no like side character because it's like the main characters and then everyone else. I don't know how much of them are side characters. They're just so many. They're so. Of them. They're basically all main characters. They're all main characters. <laughs> it's impossible, right? But uh, Colonel West from First Law Trilogy, I think I had the biggest roller coaster of emotions with him, and it's such a fascinating character to deal with. Awesome. Love that character. All right, we got the next question here. Is from Combative Robo Guy twenty four ninety. Do you want to? Uh, yeah, ask I'll, I'll read this one. Uh, what is the maximum amount of graphic content you can take before deciding that you just don't want to read anymore, regardless of how well it is used? For example, will you choose to put down a book for describing grape? Okay. Do you have an answer for that, or do you want me to go? You go first. I would say, so the parentheses here with the question of regardless of how well it's used, for me, if it's used well, like it, it has impact the story, it's there for a reason. Mm-hmm. for whether it's the message that's supposed to be there for this emotional pull or so you understand the character more, whatever it is. The example I will use, and this isn't really a huge spoiler, but the last dual movie, for example, there is a scene that occurs twice. Grape. Good. Great. Oh, you can't, that's right. You can't say it. I'll, I'll mute that. So a, a grape scene that happens twice in the last duel, the movie. It's completely essential. You saw the film too. Like it absolutely needs to be there twice for the message of the film, for the storytelling, for the impact. And it's all there. So personally, if the graphic content is in a level that makes me leave the story and think about the, it was there for the intended purpose and makes me, uh, you know, I didn't, I don't look at it and think, oh, they did that just to be cheap, to cheapen it, or they did it for the wrong reasons, or they did it to sexualize for the wrong reasons. I'm going to leave with a way worse attitude and be like, ah, that was not necessary whatsoever. But if it's compelling for the story, I guess there's almost no bounds as well if it makes a compelling story. Oh, here's the bounds. Here's the bounds. I will say this. Anything to do with children. Like, for example, Cuties (laughs) as a film. So... Regardless of the, there are certain things that don't care what their yeah, intentions are. Yeah, so I, I have to put a big asterisk on, I guess, things that are, comp- yeah, yeah. Th- so there is a line, I should say. There's, I, there's, there's a line like that. But. Yeah, there's, um, there's a book that I'm trying to remember. I think it's Prince of Thorns. Yeah, I read the first chapter and I just put it down because the main character was, uh, basically graping this village girl, and I was like, mm. nope. Don't need it. Don't need. Don't need to read this. No, you're fair. I don't fair. want to. And it's kind of the same thing with movies. Is I don't really like bloody horror, like kind of slasher films. Mm-hmm. Not my, not my thing. I'm fine with like reading violent scenes, like kind of bloody, gory stuff. But that's on paper. It's different. Mm. So yeah, I'm just not the biggest fan of them in general. But I'm kind of same with you. I'm, I'm the same. I don't seek it out those kind of stories mm-hmm. uh, so I guess I haven't read enough stories that it's over the top like it's been a big issue like the Blood of Thorn and Prince of Thorns is that the one that has yeah. so I haven't read stuff like that of the things that I've consumed it hasn't really crossed the line because I kind of know going in beforehand but I would yeah there are lines there mm-hmm. are lines so I'm going to kind of walk my answer back and forth a bit there Yeah. next question we have is from Locke who asks if you could eat a dinner with any character from any book or real time as you all inspired me to read it who would it be and what would you have? I would have curry with death. I would have crab with wit. Both good answers. The thing is, I was making a Discworld reference, and I, know I haven't you read could, cur- yeah, And you I haven't have, read it. I, I haven't read that it's, before. It's fine. Other okay. people understood. They laughed. Uh, from Wheel of Time specifically. Um, no, death is a great answer. Yeah, yeah, no, because they yeah. ask it or Wheel of Time. I'm giving them both. Character I would want to have dinner with specifically. Rand. You know why? No, no. Oh. The, um, I was going to diss you, but... Rand is bland. You guys would get along great. Yeah. Hey, Rand, how are you? I'm good. How are you? That's good, Rand. Um, I'm trying to remember her name. The, the, uh, I, the brown... The brown Aja Aes Sedai, who's okay. kind of in the beginning there. I really like her character. I'm trying to remember her name. 
It, they don't know who you're talking about. Y'all know who I'm talking about, everyone. But come on, imagine having dinner with Wit from Stormlight. I don't know if I have the... Uh, the self-confidence. I don't have the self-confidence <laughs> yet. <laughs> he, well, no spoilers to the series, but it's not always making fun. There's, that think, is true. Think of the other Wit moments, you know? Here's the thing. I'm neither depressed enough to get the, <laughs> like, compassionate Wit, yeah. and I'm not confident enough to take on wits like i'm in that uncomfortable middle ground that i'm going to be ridiculed that's the best thing you said in 74 episodes <laughs> that's the best line it's, you've peaked you was downhill from there that was perfectly said <laughs> Dude, that's so true that's, yeah. that's scary too. <laughs> all right next next one here this is what we're we're getting toward the end here, all right? You ready, Rich? Oh god. So what book or series besides Red Rising do you wish you could read again for the first time, Rich? Mm. Shoot. What would you say? For the first time. The first time. I think Lightbringer. We, we're learning something this episode. Because then I could read it and not remember the ending. There you go. And I could enjoy it all again. Because okay. right now I have the ending in mind. I'm like, oh, yeah. dang, it sucks. <laughs> but if you could read the first four and stop. You yeah. like the fifth book. Now, here's the real answer is Lord of the Rings. Okay. Mainly because I would love to erase my memory of the movies and then read the books. Okay. Understood. That makes sense because, if, yeah, watching the movies first, of course, the books are going to be very different. Yeah. Uh, and to give my similar answer from before, read again for the first time. <sighs> I think Stormlight. I think specifically Way of Kings, just Way of Kings again, because mm. that sparked my love for reading again. And Same. it was, it, it did a lot for me. Although it's not even it's not even my favorite Stormlight book, but I think it's still a phenomenal book. But Way of Kings specifically did something to me. Mm. So I'll say that. Now our next question. By the way, if you're still in this episode, since this is, is going to keep going, this is a long episode. What, yeah. what should you what should they comment down below if they're still sticking around? Uh, that you know I I could murder a curry. Is that a reference? A, it's, to a Discord? Discord, it's a Discord. All right, reference. I could murder a curry. Uh, uh, <laughs> so. What what is okay? I'm gonna have to read the book. What book is it from specifically? Just any of them? It's from Mort. From Mort. Okay. Now this next question is from Rick. You want to read this one? From yeah. Rick. From Rick. How did you get into reading? What's your least favorite book? Hardcover or paperback? How has reading changed your life? And how often do you read? I ask lost questions. Uh, you don't have to answer them all. Well, guess what? I'm gonna answer them all anyway. How did I get into reading? My mother. My mother uh, loves to read, and she read to me all the time. And so that's how I got into that's reading. Uh, what's your least favorite book? Name of the uh, no, actually, it's uh, the ben. seventh, the seventh son by um, uh, Orson Scott Card. That is an abysmal book. It should be taught in lessons on how not to write a book. Um, hardcover or paperback. Third answer, the correct answer, an answer number C is trade paperback. That's the best you're copy. Correct, you're correct. Uh, how has reading changed your life? Well, we're doing a podcast. I, in I think my vocabulary has increased. Yeah, my as mother if... has noticed. She, it's like, oh, I didn't know you actually had a good vocabulary, Richard. You used to talk so poor and out of ignorant. respect. Out of respect for your mother, I'll agree with that then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how often do you read? Man, I kind of read in spurts. Like I'll go a couple days, like not reading anything, and then I'll read for like five hours. Or I'll read every day with audiobook. I don't know. I'm, I'm very sporadic. Similar in I'm very similar in reading. Like, I'll have three, four day period where I'm just finishing books. And then um, and none of that will ever be on the wheel of time, apparently, because I don't finish that. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's in spurts of that's, that's my singular focus we were talking about earlier of I'm either reading or I'm not and I'm doing something else. So <laughs> I, I, I won't be redundant and answer those questions. Good answers, Rich. Good answers. Good answer. Good family view. Good answer. Good answer. Next one we have is from Maj, who asks, what would be your casting in a first law series slash movie? God, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know even where to begin. 
I'm not good with uh, actors' names and well, all that. Maj, but. listen up. We've answered everybody's questions so far. We're not answering yours. Next person. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Next is from Alex. Alex asks, "What are you gonna do a full review on First Law?" No, I uh, wish. No, that was from Lex. That was oh, from Lex. Oh, Lex. Yeah, Lex asks. Sorry. Well, Lex asks. Yeah, we we'll get we answer that already. This this next one's from Alex. Alex is a patron as well. Thank you very much for the support, Alex. He asks, "Would Austin consider growing a mustache?" Can you grow a mustache? A poor one, a very poor mustache. I, I will say there was a time once mm. where I I think the longest I've gone is like a week without shaving, and I I grow only hair here like a, a goatee. Goatees kinda, are cool. Uh, yeah, I guess, but it's it's not a full beard. It's like well, a, you're not letting it go long. Enough. I know it's been a week. That, maybe I'll try it. I can let you borrow some beard oil. Thanks. Can I borrow it, your shampoo too? You still use you know, shampoo? You still actually? Have, yeah, yeah. You still have do. to use shampoo? Yeah, because okay. the top of your head skin yeah, is I did not, I'm not, I, I'm not inquiring any further. It's fine. No, I'm just saying. This next one's from Jack. <laughs> Jack asks, what's the go-to recommendation to try to get a non-reading friend hooked? In all honesty, Red Rising. That was my answer! Yes! Red Rising's up there. Why? Because you're going to call me a simpleton, and it's a good intro book. Yeah, basically. Yeah, just shut up. Just, um, <laughs> uh, when we start to get to the two-hour mark in podcasts, like this is the moment in real life where if there wasn't a camera, oh, I would have walked away hours ago. <laughs> so, uh, and then video game question, we answered that earlier, so we'll, we'll go through that. Yeah. This next one's from Aaron. You want to read this one? Uh, Aaron says, how often do you, do you all get recognized? Never. <laughs> we've, we've yet to get recognized. Actually, here's the funny thing is mm. when one of our TikToks went like six million views. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Act, I think definition of like it's viral. Viral, yeah. Small viral. A bunch of bunch of your friends from high school and back home yeah. were messaging you yeah. all the time. I didn't get one message. Not one. Because, now, here's because the thing. Because you look so different. Yes. In so high school, I had high a full school, head of hair. You had hair. No facial You had hair. a personality. You had things going in your life. Now, here's also a thing is I don't give out my number that often. <laughs> but yeah. that, that is one thing. But here's the, my friends that I do keep in contact with. They have not seen it. They so. have not seen it right. Uh, yeah, when that thing went viral, I guess, a lot of so a lot of people on social media, like, you know, Facebook, people from high school were messaging saying, oh, my God. You but know, it could also be that I you, don't have you don't, social yeah, media. Yeah, you don't use social media that much. And so. that... They can't reach now. That's the that's the kind answer. The other answer is they don't care enough to actually oh, reach out. Oh, Rich. That's the other option. Rich, that's a step too far. I'm choosing to believe it's because I don't have social media. Please do that. That's you're, what I'm gonna. You're go one with. step away from having a serious conversation. I, I'm one step away from having like a uplifting conversation with wit yeah exactly. that's how you, that's how you know it's yeah. it's it's bad exactly when like, wit's being kind to you it's, <laughs> it's not going well i can't that, that still that is the most insightful thing you said on the pod that wit line was great man <laughs> so then we've got brian who asked if you could each carve one book into stone to ensure it would last for thousands of years which would it be is what thor of the rings hyperion for me oh shut up this next question is from anna you want to read anna's yeah. Uh, what Cosmere theories did you have that uh, did you have while reading the Stormlight that turned out to be right or wrong? For example, I thought when Nail was first introduced with Nightblood, it was uh, for sure Vasher. That's fair. Um, ooh, what theory did I have? I'll be honest. I think first book, uh, Way of Kings. I was pretty sure that. Uh, Navani was going to be a big character. I really loved her character. I was like, we're going to get more of her. And there was no reason to expect that. Yeah. Well, no, no, was, spo- no big spoilers, but yeah. She's a, she's a prominent yeah. character yes. in the series. There you go. I guess that's one theory, I guess. Good, good theory on that. Yeah, there, there was something about Navani that was, she was very light in Wave Kings. Mm-hmm. A very, fa- and then I remember you telling me Oh, just wait till. So yeah, and then we have. Oh no, sorry. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So then, next question we have is: What's your favorite book with a female protagonist? Sword of Kagan. Uh, Sword of Kagan, but also Emperor, Emperor Soul, Soul for you. Yep. Emperor, Emperor Soul's Soul. probably up there. Uh, oh, there's there's quite a few, but I I would go like 
the common ones would be like Poppy War, but I didn't like Poppy War that much. I know it's well written, but eh. but no, those two are Emperor probably, Soul sort of Kagan. That's yeah, for those sure. Those are the two probably best answers. Now we have Digger Dan YT says, Richard, what is your favorite? By the way, very sketchy name. <laughs> it's just it's close. It's close. You're walking As, a thin like, sh- line. Sho- shovel, shovel, dig. That's that's <laughs> just to clarify for uh, people not seeing the screen right now. So he says, Richard, what is your favorite Wheel of Time book out of the series? Austin, please catch up. I will. I br- just I've had enough of these questions. I'll be honest. Yeah. After Red Rising, I think you just need to go on a Wheel of Time tear. Yeah, you need to get tunnel vision on Wheel of Time. Yeah, but favorite book is either the Shadow Rising fourth book the last book a memory of light or the gathering storm that's all that's a lot of favorites uh, knife of dreams is also up there i got a lot of favorites i like them all it's the one time you have passion when I you talk have- a little time and it's great i love to see i love to see that little child of richie come out yeah. it's good. <laughs> this next question is from jar 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 hugh oh my god i'm gonna butcher that name i'm so jar from Jar. And he asks, what color of socks are you two wearing right now? I am so glad you asked. Black. I Listen. Uh, Jopa, look at that sock right there. It's colorful. You've got... I don't even know what they're... They're dog. No, they're chameleons, I think. And, they look like dogs. But anyways, it's the one thing I do is I wear socks with things on them. It's, it's my one outlet of creativity See, other than writing. I found that the only, the only thing that requires a certain color of sock is fancy events. Fancy Suits. events require black socks. Yeah. And then I kind of thought to myself, is there any situation that requires white socks? No. Huh. So why not just buy only black socks? And that way you're always fine for a fancy event. You're an enigma. And uh, that's why I basically only have black socks. You are Because why else. buy white socks? Okay, by the way, for 20,000 subscribers, we're not doing this shit again. <laughs> I don't want to hear you talking about socks or the wheel of time or someone asking me to catch up one more time. Just means you got to do it. I know. I know. You know what's hilarious? 20K sub special in Q&A. Austin, when are you finishing Great Hunt? Damn it. I still haven't done it. It's just... I hope not. Please. I know. Now, this next question is from Ruth. You want to read this one? Yeah. Uh, Ruth Gumman, if you could only watch one TV show for the rest of your life, which would you pick? Kenobi or Rings of Power? Oh! Uh, honestly, Rings of Power. Yeah, no, Rings of Power. I'll take that. Rings of Power? Is, Rings of Power suck. It's bad, but Kenobi. Kenobi's one of the worst TV shows I've seen. It's so bad. I know there's worse. I, there's I know, definitely like, worse. I've heard that the Witcher prequel, like the Witcher Origins TV show was like god-awful. Pretty sure Velma is horrible. Pretty sure Velma. But Kenobi is one of the worst I've personally seen. It's so bad. You've heard me on this channel say multiple times how much I despise and hate Season 8 of Game of Thrones. Kenobi is worse than Season 8 of Game of Thrones. Yeah. It is worse. And Game of Thrones Season 8 is awful. But Kenobi is, is worse. Kenobi TV show really killed basically any continued interest or love in Star Wars. That's the worst thing it did for me as well. As I haven't watched Andor yet, which I've heard is great. By the way, Bookborn recommended we, it to us. We, we will, are watching Andor because Bookborn said yes, we had to. She recommended it, and others have recommended it. So getting those recommendations, of course, we'll watch it. But without that, Kenobi killed it for us. Yeah. So no, it's, yeah, it's sad. The next question is from Rasmus, who asked, Do you ever stop reading a book series because you think it will be perfect for combating a future reading slump? Yes. Discworld. Completely. Discworld. Discworld is my oh. palate cleanser series. I like I, I wonder I, I'm at a point where I need to read some more Discworld right now, but I almost never want to be completely done with it. Yeah. I want it to always be around. Like if you read one per year for Discworld. It's too little. You too could, little but for But you me. could last until you're like That's 60. forty years. Yeah, sixty years old. Oh, I know. I, I do need to read more than one a year. Yeah. But yeah, How about I don't two a year. Biannual disc Discworld could last until you're like forty something. Here's the thing: it's it's always when I'm like, man, I'm reading too much heavy, depressing stuff, or like just heavy things. Yeah, I need to read a Discworld book. You're right. That's that's always where it comes. Or man, I'm I just need to smile. 
Discworld. Again, you could always talk to me. I'm always here, Richard. That that you're the cause of my problems. I'm not going to go to the solution. You mean you're. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to perfect acting and real cry and make you look like an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I was talented enough, oh, you'd look so bad. And you would see the most genuine <laughs> smile from me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next what we have is from Nicholas. He asked, do, you, do any of you plan to write a book one day? He has to finish it by the end of this year. I will finish the book. And do you do plan on writing one, correct? I do. I have one outlined. If I have the time, I'd love to. Amazing. This next one is from Thomas. Do you want to ask this one? Yeah. Uh, Thomas asks, if either of you were to write your own fantasy or sci-fi book, what would be the premise and tone be? I personally want to write a uh, mix between fantasy and uh, Western. I really love Western movies, television, shit, all that stuff. I love that tone and ambiance. So I would like a mix between those two things. Um, premise, I think, would be... More a young, I guess, kind of young adult, but young adult finds themselves like challenge themselves, puts themselves on an adventure mainly out of stupid reasons. Uh, kind of moral of the lesson being uh, you don't find gratification from others, you find uh, satisfaction from internally. I think would be the kind of ultimate premise of it. Meditation. <laughs> Look. Yeah, kind of. There you go. <laughs> no, you have a great premise for your book, and yeah. everything that we were outlining, I mean, you were outlining it, and we were shooting mm-hmm. back and forth, and the things you constructed. It's got I a think it, really cool magic system. Yeah. You should really go with it. Yeah, it's. I think it's a lot of fun. It's yeah, a lot yeah. of... Um, I mean, when the time yeah. comes, yeah, give it a... Yeah. My, my book currently is... So I could say to what the tone is. Tone is whimsical. I'm taking inspiration where, you know, when I give my author pitch, mm-hmm. I will use the examples of trying to emulate of like Discworld and Percy Jackson of the kind of feel that you get where it's more it's not middle grade but it's more YA but also try to make the fun whimsicalness like for example I have a talking toad in mind just like there's lots of talking animals in Discworld so trying to emulate that and yeah that that's the mm-hmm. more whimsical feel and it's straight fantasy so it's not western or anything but there's there's no sci-fi no sci-fi in my book <laughs> I'm not smart enough to write sci-fi. That's the thing. I need a. P- I know that my favorite sci-fi books are people who have PhDs. Just I don't have a PhD. They're too smart. They're yeah. too smart. All right. Next question is from Alex. Alex asks, "Do you read more than one book at the same time, or would you rather read one than jump to the next in your TBR?" I do read more than one book at the same time. Typically, I always have a physical book that I'm reading and then an audio book that I'm going on, and mm-hmm. I'll alternate between the two. Same here, and I used to never do that before the podcast. It was just one book at a time because there was no rush. You know, relax, enjoy, sit down, read a book once every five years, you know. But now with the pod, it's same thing where I'll read one physical and then one audio. But I haven't done it yet to where I'm reading multiple physicals at the same time. That's I've done it before. It's hard. Is it? It's not fun either. Yeah, because your mind's in too many different places. Like, imagine watching... I mean, people do this all the time. I shouldn't. That was a bad example. I was going to say, imagine watching multiple shows at once. That was the stupidest example I could have used. It's it's good to do like alternate between two books that you don't particularly enjoy as much. So if a book is not really gel, like let's say you have eight hours of a day that you actually have to read and you need to read two books, it's better to split your time. Maybe there's a natural pause, like a stormlight, end of part one. And then you take a break after part one or something like that. That can make some sense. All right, you want to read this next one Mm -hmm. from AJ? AJ, how would you apply your rating system to video games? Emotional impact? For the most case, it's very, very different because there are games that Mm. basically are like stories where God of War. It's a wonderful story. With the rating system, we sort of throw it out and just have two categories. Fun and visuals and slash sounds. It's really, are you having fun? And does it look neat? Gameplay and then visual. Yeah, that's basically the two. I mean, with the story, yes, of course. Like, there's stories there and everything. Stories are great, yeah. all, but yeah. gameplay and visuals. And that's why Nintendo is around forever is because yeah. they have cute visuals, but it's mainly fun gameplay. It's just fun. It's But great then fun. other AAA developers are like, keep going hard on the visuals yeah. and they suck at gameplay. Yeah. That's why I like indie games. 
This next one's from Sly, and Sly asked, how did you two meet? Well, uh, my friend from high school went to the same college with me, so we both went to the same college, and my friend from high school's roommate, who was randomly assigned, was this guy. That was me. So I walk into my friend's dorm room, and I just see this guy That's on me. his top bunk just doing crunches okay. in his bed. Was that the first time you met? That's the first time I walked in. It's just him doing <laughs> crunches in his bed like some prisoner. <laughs> It got the bed all sweaty too. It was such a stupid thing to do. It it, it was great. Hey, look, it paid off. Well, it's the thing is, we lived in a triple, so there's like three of us. There's no room on the floor, and I was just starting to get into yeah. fitness freshman year, and so uh, you walked in. Well, yeah. Anyways, so that's how we met. And then first time we like, mainly became like more friends, friends outside of like mutual, like a like we were more like the friend of my friend. Mm -hmm. And then there was at one point like you were, you had a poker group going. And you didn't have anywhere to host it. And you're like, hey, Richard has an apartment off campus. Let's yep. see if he'll do it. And then I was there. You know, sophomore we, year, right? Yeah. So that's where, yeah, transition more. Mm -hmm. Man, that, that is so strange that we met through your high school roommate that was randomly assigned with me. Yeah. Oh, things like that happen. Other than that, probably wouldn't have met. No, there's, um, let's not even joke about it. It's fine. Could, there's so many out there. It's too, the, it's too the what ifs, the, the, the what ifs, the could have been. Yeah. What do you What do you think your life would be like without me? See, I would have probably hung out with another friend of mine, Liam, more. Yeah. Oh, Liam's and great. my my life probably would be more successful. You would. I mean, Liam's a great guy. He's a great guy, and also just like. An extrovert yeah. where I'm a, he brought me out of my shell. He's just more financially successful, <laughs> just socially successful. Like, if I stuck with him, I'd probably be better off. Yeah, you probably still have some hair left too because didn't we bully you into shaving your head? <laughs> You you pinned that us in the bookborn episode. Yeah, you you were like, ah, bookborn, they bullied me into shaving every last follicle. Oh, poor me, you bastard. That felt good. <laughs> that was half the, the story. Is, it was half the story. It was bullying along with self bullying uh, and fear. No, I was gonna say like that. That was the only defense we had against you. It's like you walk in a room, go. Austin, here's three things I'm making fun of you for. Connor, here's five things. <laughs> Pointing fingers. And it's like, how do we fight back? Genetics. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question here. We Okay, we are toward the end. I swear. <laughs> so this, this next question is top three villains from Bandito. Andros Guile. Um, throw a jackal. Come on. I'll put Jackal. Yes. I, guess. I, I don't know if he really belongs there, yes. but that's and who else? Who's your fun. third? I, I'll take your list. We'll, we'll have one list. Gollum. Together. There you go. Yeah. Gollum's a villain. Yeah. 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 It's a good one. Maybe more. Would you say antagonist or villain? Villain. Yeah. Yeah. villain. yeah. How about this next one? This next one is from Ma Rai, and she has this, or he uh, has this. Do you guys plan to make the? Reading uh, the few uh, the first few sentences of fan novels a part to part, uh, basically another series. I think it'd be a lot of fun. That would be fun. I want to do another one of those because our patrons did a great job yes. with those. Let's put sentences. that on the idea board. Yeah, we'll put it on the idea board. Thank you for the suggestion on that. Next one, Jared asked, "Who is taller?" Can't tell. With oh, we got to stand up now. <laughs> I don't know if we'll fit in frame, but here we go. Uh, audio, audio listeners, it's going to be a couple seconds. Uh, you know what's hilarious, Rich? Yeah. The camera's too short, so oh, I know. they can't even tell. It's going to be a mystery. No, Rich is tall. I think you're an inch taller. I think so. Okay. Yeah. The next, thing is, yeah. you look probably taller because you got the hair. It adds another It is. It does. Yeah, yeah. And I think, here's one thing I'll say. Hmm. Genuine critique of get that posture up. What are you doing? Look at your look at your how stay, long is hold this on. thing been on? Stay right there. Look at you. Yeah, I feel comfortable. That's fair. I was, I was trying to I'm feeling I, good. Rich. I was just trying to get a reaction out of you. I'm not gonna lie. We're a couple hours in. That was that was pure bait. All right. <laughs> I had no reason to go like that. All right. This next question is from RCA. It says is Richard secretly in love with Red Rising but won't show it. Yes. I don't think I'm secret about that I really love Golden Sun. You do. 
I really do Just love not that as much book. As it's me. great. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, this next question is Sarah Hot. Do you want to ask this one? Yeah. If you had to pull off a heist and you got to assemble your own crew of characters from all the books you've read, uh, what would your crew look like? For example, the mastermind, the hacker, the pickpocket, the getaway driver. Mastermind, um, I'd probably pick Locke from The Lies of Locke Lamora, obviously. Uh, the hacker, probably... Mm, oh, ooh, from uh, the ship from... Orion? Nope, 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 nope. The ship from Murderbot Book Two. Yes, yes. yes. The, the, mo- the mother, the, the oh, what's Murderbot's the sh- friend. Oh, what's the name of Murderbot's friend? Oh God, Murderbot's friend's ship. Yes, that that's one. the hacker. That's the hacker. Uh, the pickpocket. Can I throw a curveball with the pickpocket? Sure. Arter Ben, just so I could punch him in the face. <laughs> just I want him there, just to like kick him down. Screw that guy. Um, shoot. I guess Gene, maybe from same thing, Lies of Locke Lamora. If okay. I had to pick someone from anything else, then I'd pick Matt Coffin. Actually, okay. yes, Matt Coffin. Getaway driver, throw away books, and get baby from Baby Driver. Baby from Baby Driver. It Take now, one from a movie. I'm, I'm trying to think of uh, from books. From books. Because there's not many, like, Getaway you know, driver. Getaway drivers in fantasy and sci-fi, unless you're considering uh, like sci-fi, like your spaceship stuff. So yeah. Orion. Take Orion from Red Rising. How about that? Orion, but I think there's all May Ooh. Spencer. From Spencer where? from the uh Brandon Sanderson's series, sci fi series called oh, Okay, Sky um Skyward. Skyward, yeah. Got it. Okay, okay. All right, here we go. Questions from Chip. <laughs> what are your views on the anti-villain versus anti-hero? I just saw your episode four on villains. You went in depth on anti-heroes and antagonists. Deadpool's favorite anti-hero, um, et cetera, et cetera. What are your takes on favorites in sci-fi and fantasy in terms of the anti-villain? You skipped a lot of that question, but uh, what what are your takes on favorite sci-fi, yeah. fantasy in terms of anti-villain? Yeah. Um, Andros Guile or from... Steve Stephen Guglitch his character Wilt Wilt oh yeah I really like him as an anti villain that's great yeah 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 all right we got three more question folks oh, Rich have go. you been having a good time I've been having a uh, okay time considering the circumstances that I'm sitting across from you for like many hours this has been our longest episode yet. Oh my We're God. approaching two and a half hours. Jesus Christ. So, okay, we've had this moment before in a previous podcast episode. It was we were ranking characters. Mm-hmm. Let's take another moment to say, viewers, if you're a couple hours in, think about your life choices. <laughs> <laughs> like if you're folding laundry, you're in the car right now. I don't know. You, you maybe could, you're at work. You could be listening to something to better your life. But we've no. had we've had this conversation. I just can't, how about this? Before you had them comment, you know, that was level one. You had them comment, what was it? Something about curry and death. Oh, yeah. Uh, I could I could murder a curry. I could murder a curry. Now, for the people that made it this far, <laughs> what should they comment? Oh. Um, delete TikTok. Because remember all the way back before we had our, our thing was... Told him to delete YouTube. Delete TikTok. Yeah. Delete TikTok. Honestly, yeah. Keep YouTube. It really helps. It, really it helps, helps us. It helps us greatly. You can delete TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not good for we're, you. We're hypocrites. You know that. <laughs> now we have three more questions. This one's okay. from Darren Huckey. He asks, where are you guys? I may have missed that or you may not have shared it. We're in Virginia. Yeah. We're in Virginia. And then we have from Mari asks, do you guys plan to make the... Oh, we already asked that one. Sorry. Yep. Uh, this last question from Lily's Pages asks... Should I read Red Rising? Richard, end us on a beautiful note, a crescendo. The masses have come, the opera, we are here. The final answer to the last Q&A for 10,000. Thank you so much for all these subscribers. So, so, so much. Richard, should you read Red Rising? It depends. 